Welcome to your doom. What's up, everybody? This is Otto. This is Justin. And this is the Welcome to Your Doom show. And we have a special guest in today. My cousin, Ajay Tiku, of the famous Tiku Talk yeah, yeah. blog, music blog about reggae music. What's up, man? Not much, dude. Not much. Just, just hanging out, just ready hang to out. talk some physical media. Man. Yeah, physical media. Before we get into uh, the main topic, uh, what have you been? Have you seen anything that you've liked or read anything that you've liked recently? I would like to sort of get yeah. an idea of what you've been getting into. Uh, well, I like we were actually just watched a little demo of earlier. I've been watch. I just watched First Man last oh, night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, we were just watching that earlier. Yeah. The Skipped Ryan. right to the ending as as one. <laughs> As one does when yeah. you watch a movie. But we kind of yeah. knew how it was going to end, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no spoilers. No yeah, spoilers. That's there. right. But he does make it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I watched that uh, last night, actually. That was uh, phenomenal. Um, other than that, uh, the only stuff I've been plowing through mm. lately is uh, Planet Earth 2 and Blue Planet 2. Oh, nice. Um, so, like you, I recently jumped on the 4K TV bandwagon, yeah. right? Boxing Day. Uh, sorry, Black Friday or Boxing mm-hmm. Day. And, uh, so yeah, so the first thing I started doing was watching those cause I was like, I've been waiting actually. I never, even though they came out a while ago, I refused to watch them until I had a 4k TV Yeah, cause yeah. I knew that content was 4k. I didn't want to spoil it. So I waited for a long time for that delayed gratification. <laughs> and, uh, what's funny is that even like blue planet one was this, it was the same thing for 1080p HD video. Right. Like I feel yeah. like I feel like that was the it's like hey you want you want great HD content Blue Planet. Yeah. Now 4K is becoming more mainstream. You want great 4K content Blue Planet 2. Yeah. I feel like they're like the ambassadors of the new generation of technology. For yeah. 8K it's going to be Blue Planet 3. For sure, yeah. There's yeah. always there's, there's always like that. There's titles like that that make you make the jump or when you That's get that right. critical mass of yeah. titles, yeah. right? And it's like okay, now I have to pull the trigger cuz mm-hmm. there's just too much good stuff there. To not give it the best treatment. Yeah, right? that's true. That's um, true. So, so yeah. anything else you've been getting into? Uh, no, but I mean the. I think the. As since the since that's what the topic is for today as well. Mm-hmm. All the 4K content I've consumed up until this afternoon, watching that demo on yours, yeah. has been streaming. Oh, I so this is the first time you saw yeah. physical media. Yeah, yeah. So um, all my my 4K TV is there, but only everything has been streamed. I don't have a UHD player yet, even yeah. though I do have some. That's right. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, it's cool. That's cool. Yeah. What and like, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was great. I mean, in particular, this scene. Like, as soon as I watched it last night, I was like, yeah. "Oh God, I have to bring this because." <laughs> that's right. It yeah. was just. It looked so good, even in 1080p uh, on my home theater. It looked phenomenal. Yeah. It sounded phenomenal. Yeah. And I was just like, "This is going to be mind blowing in 4K." So I was, yeah, dude. Uh, no, it's great. It's great. Your setup is really amazing. And you know what? We'll get into some of that later. We can go through each other's setups on the movies because it's actually going to play into some of the conversation mm-hmm. a little bit later. Right. Reading. Do you want to talk about reading? Yeah, yeah. Like, are, you re- are you reading anything interesting? What do you reading got? wise? Can you read? Yes. Oh, very oh, well. There you go. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been reading uh, a few books actually by an author named Richard Powers. So I've kind of been plowing familiar. through like three or four of his novels straight. Okay. Are they, is this like uh, fiction? Or yeah, it, it's, no? it's fiction. Yeah. Um, the first one that kind of got me hooked on him was this book called The Overstory. Oh, The Trees. The Tree Book. Yeah, yeah The so Tree it's, Book. It's a book yeah. about trees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it sounds super exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah sign me up. It's, uh, well, it's, so the way he's written is it's like a series of vignettes. Like it's just chapters following different characters. Okay. And they're, and then basically that's the first half of the book. The second half of the book, like the roots of the trees, their stories intertwine. Right? Oh. Um, so it's really it's really neat the way he's done the done the book. But you could argue that the trees are actually like the main character like they're the stars mm-hmm. of this book yeah and uh it's it's just phenomenal i don't know how to explain but i, I really like the book um it's uh his his writing his prose is very majestic yeah that's if that's the word that's a I good use, that's right? a like, good uh that's a good way to describe something like, yeah and it was it was very educational at the same time yeah. science wise you know he learned a lot about trees cool. and uh yeah and then i subsequently started after that i read another book of his called orfeo which is about a guy who's like a musical composer and he's on the run because they think he's a bioterrorist or something. It's, it's kind of a crazy story, but 
But again, it's the same sort of uh, the way that he writes this character of the composer. Yeah. His prose, again, is very majestic. The way he's describing the music is like, wow, I, I'm taking notes, right? Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> I wish I could write like this. Right? It's, it's, it's that good. So, um, yeah. Very cool. So that's very cool. Been... You're, also, you're also a massive Star Trek fan. You've been watching the new show. Yeah, right? Discovery Season yeah. 2. Yeah. Uh, you're liking it. Sounds like it. it. Yeah. Love it, yeah. It's, Remember it's, last time uh, I messaged you, I'm like, hey, you want to play some, like, I think it was Diablo on yeah. PlayStation you want to play? He's like, no, I just finished making popcorn to watch the next episode of Star Trek. <laughs> I'm like, that's actually the, f- I feel like that's the first time I've heard someone making popcorn to watch an episode of a TV show. I, I, it's so good. Man. It's good, yeah. I heard it's, I heard it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't gotten into it. Uh, Shagu watched a bit of the first season. She really liked it. But uh, I think it's on Netflix now, too. Or at least it was... It's in it was... Netflix, but not in North, North America. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, in yeah, Netflix yeah. in Europe and other places. Yeah, that's why I Here, CBS it. has the, the rights to rights. it, right? Yeah. Right, right, okay. right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's really... Uh, the, especially this season, uh, it's it's really... Some of the episodes are really going back to like the original roots of the show. Yeah. Like, uh, plot lines are sort of similar, so you could argue it's kind of a rehash. But I mean, um, you it know, looks the, great. It looks great. Like the production great. is like like literally, I got popcorn because I felt like I'm I'm sitting down to watch like a one hour movie. Like, yeah, it looks yeah. So good. That's cool. good. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to jump right into it. So today we're going to talk about uh, the what seems like the uh, phys- uh, the demise of physical media. So. In, in particular, I think the conversation is going to be a lot around, around movies, but we're really talking about music, uh, music and movies and the way people obtain that, uh, uh, like through streaming or whether you buy uh, Blu-rays or buy CDs or buy vinyls. You're a big vinyl like enthusiast now, um, so you could probably speak to that a little bit more. But there's a couple of uh, news articles that have sort of prompted this conversation. You have a more compre- comprehensive list than I do, so maybe you can run through some of those. Like, in the last what, like six months, maybe like a, a couple of things yeah. have happened that sort of led us to believe that physical media is actually probably not here to stay, uh, or in in its mass consumption at, at the scale that, that it is now. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's I think there's some debate about whether it's here to stay or not, or whether. You know, maybe this might be the last round of it that we see. Right. 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 But, but, uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, things that have happened lately that support that thesis that it's going away is yeah. Uh, so last year, um, Oppo, which is a manufacturer of really high end uh, components, Blu-ray players, DVD mm-hmm. players back in the day. Yeah, um, Oppo players. I remember just being like the highest end DVD and Blu-ray, yeah. and they're like six seven hundred dollars yeah players. they were always like, the most sought after yeah even in their audio stuff their yeah their audio their stuff, yeah. and all this stuff i remember their stereo really amps i remember are yeah. really really expensive yeah, yeah. yeah so they announced that they were going to in april 2018 they were going to stop making all dvd blu-ray players and yep. uh i think something else headphones or something but i don't know mm-hmm. um this year uh, uh samsung announced they were discontinuing all blu-ray players right uh, Blu-ray and Ultra um, HD yeah, players. That was the one that I. That's the one that first caught my attention was the yeah. Samsung news. And um, yeah, and then also kind of related, but not really related to physical media, but the streaming side of things um, was the Ultraviolet uh, Movie Locker shut down, which in January they closed their service. Yeah. Um, which I guess I don't know if everybody who's familiar with Ultraviolet is. But, Let's um, go through it. Let's go through it. Yeah. yeah. So Ultraviolet is that. Uh, is one of the services where when you actually do buy physical media, you get the digital the code for the digital download, and then yeah. you can you can basically sometimes choose uh, either their service. I think sometimes you could even tie it to Google Play, but you can really? basically stream yeah. the movie that you paid for. Yes. And bought, you know, you bought your physical copy of. So, <clears throat> so a lot of people were kind of uh, taken by surprise when yeah. that went out because yeah. uh, you know they figured that they had uh, access to their digital stream, and all of a sudden that was gone. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, there was one guy I worked with at DreamWorks. We had this like email chain where you could sell stuff. This guy would always go and buy Blu-rays, and then he'd use the digital code and just sell the Blu-ray, get rid yeah. of the physical media. So he'd get those ultra. <laughs> well, so he's probably pretty fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, anytime really I get funny. them, I'd always get the digital. Like I'd always download the digital copy through 
ultraviolet. When I was in the states, I'd use uh, shit. What's it called? Voodoo. Right. And that's oh, linked Voodoo. up to Flixster, so you can actually you used to be able to watch that, but I haven't. Yeah. I haven't even checked since this whole ultraviolet thing started it's going. It's so funny. The ultraviolet thing. I tried to figure it out. I got it all working, but every time I'd revisit it, I'd have to reconfigure something or sign in again, and my password is long gone. And yeah. I didn't. The way Ultraviolet, I think it works, because there's multiple uh, 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 production companies like uh, Sony and like Warner Brothers, and they all have their own digital service, like digital redemption services. Yeah, yes. yeah. So you would redeem the code with them, but all Ultraviolet was was a universal way to access all that media. Yeah. Um, which was which was really helpful, but I could never get it to work. I, I I got it to work a few times, and you can Chromecast it. And everything and it worked great, but every other time I tried to use it, and I got really confused. They're like, "This account yeah. is not tied to this account." Yeah, and blah, blah, blah. you yeah. had to open up like six different ones for all of the yeah. different like uh, uh, hosts, basically yeah. all the different uh, companies. And so I appreciate what Ultraviolet was trying to do. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think the only way to get Ultraviolet content or streaming content from one of these services was to buy the physical disc. Yeah, you couldn't. They're not selling that no. code anywhere else, no, right? No. So the only way to get it was... The, the idea was that you get access to your movie anywhere. Yeah. Uh, along with well, along with the uh, the physical disc. I think it blocked it dur- depending on where you're at, though. Like, if you're... If you're out of country, you mean? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that, that, or at least that they might did be the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that might be the case, yeah. Sorry, when I say anywhere, I mean, you know, with it, let's say countrywide. Right. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we got Oppo stop stop making four yeah. K four K players in particular, but they, they they stopped making a lot of stuff other than that. Yeah, Samsung yeah. stopped making four K players, ultraviolet which and Blu rays. Could... They're not making any more Blu rays either. Regular Blu ray players. Oh yes, they stopped okay. all optical all, all optical disc readers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, ultraviolet, uh, a service you can only uh, a digital service that you can only redeem through buying physical media yeah. is no longer available. So. I mean, what this all points to in my mind, it's, it's, oh, well, I was taking it a piece at a time, yeah. but then I just started getting like Google was like pushing uh, news to me through my phone, through Google yeah. now. And all of the headlines are like, <laughs> is this the end of physical yeah, media? Yeah, yeah. This is the end. Like, you know, it ain't over till it's over and all of these yeah, like yeah, yeah. doom and gloom headlines. And I, and then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, yeah, like I could see this. I could see this if we continue on this trajectory um, to that the stuff will disappear, and then I was like, okay, why? And then yeah. that's kind of how we got yeah. onto this topic was, you know, why why is it disappearing? And I mean, the, I think the answer is pretty simple. It's just uh, streaming services, right? I mean, I think that's that's basically the primary reason. Yeah. Do you guys have any other thoughts on like? Well, you know, I, I I think the, like the the similar to you, like I. I was doing a bunch of, you know, Googling, looking up a bunch of things to have, come up with some sort of notes so I could, you know, speak, yeah. in, speak in coherent sentences. Yeah, right? you sound smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, like, I'm actually, I did see a lot of the doom and gloom stuff, I'm but, I, but I'm also not completely hopeless. Like, mm. uh, I feel like, you know, uh, the rumors of its death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> I, yeah. Right? Like, it's not dying yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, it's right. still going to be around. <laughs> For the foreseeable future, they're still releasing titles. Like you know, if we look at the stats, actually there are some promising numbers in there. Yeah. So well, do right? you want to jump into those? So uh, I don't. Yeah. If you consider it news, I don't know if yeah, you yeah, let's, it news let's, or, yeah, or yeah. not. But um, yeah, just in terms of titles, right? So up till the end of 2018, there were 600 UHD titles released. Yep. So far, right? Um, and uh, I think that's double what it was the previous year. So yeah. So it's, you, you know, know, there it's it's uh, there's a lot a more. Clip. Yeah. yeah. Um, UHD disc sales have doubled in uh, as of 2018. So there yeah. was 11 million units sold in 2018 compared to 6 million in 2017. Right. So that's growth, right? I mean, yeah. overall, physical media is declining, of course. Yes. Right? Total sales are going down. Yes. But the percentage of sales, which are you know these ultra high def yeah. discs, is actually going up, which I think yeah. is a good sign. Yeah. yeah. But that's for, that's just for UHD specifically. Yes. Yeah. See that, but those numbers might be. Not very representative. It's misleading. Because, it's misleading because right? people because are adopting a new. Technology. They're adopting yeah. new, new technology. There's more and more content that's being put out at 4K. So that's I right. guess that that's probably a factor. Of those numbers. But that being said, even if the sales are up and those factors are there, the sales are still happening. They're not going away, which right. is good. Right. Yeah. But I think they. I was. I, I. I really wish I pushed pulled that article before we started this. I forgot. 
But there was another one that was uh, comparing UHD uh, sale, or physical media sales to streaming, mm -hmm. and they're very small percentage yeah. of the amount of people that are watching content. Yeah. Physical media is actually, I think, and I, I'd have to double check, but I, I think that that actually represents a smaller portion than direct digital buys and right. um, streaming yeah. services like Netflix and yeah. Hulu. And yeah, I that. believe yeah. that. Yeah, so... There, there's something I want to ask about. So you, yeah. you mentioned doom and gloom yeah. about physical media. Why do you consider that doom and gloom? That's What's a good question. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you pro if you're listening to the show, you probably realize mm -hmm. where probably like Ajay and I sort of stand on this. So I think it's come out in the way we've talked about, talk about doom and gloom. Right. I, uh, I really like physical media. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking about movies specifically, like uh, television shows, uh, even music. Music? I've gone completely digital on. Right. I don't, uh, well, not completely digital. I think I own a few vinyls. I have a few CDs from, you know, way mm -hmm. back when. But I'm not buying new CDs and I'm not buying vinyls on a regular basis. So I've actually gone completely digital with music. But with f movies, I've always felt that movies, um, they're like, say, let's say the average movie is two hours. That is the easiest thing to consume in one go. A television show is just too long. Yeah. Right. So owning a TV series has yeah. never really been like, uh, yeah. unless I really thought it was a six episode miniseries or something, I could actually revisit it. But owning a TV series has never really been something that I wanted to do. Movies, I always found the the physical version of movies and presenting them the best way possible, like the best way possible for something you really love. Um, that's what that's what was important for me. And on top of that, aesthetically. Like the actual having the movies on your shelf was also like really important, but it's kind of incongruous with like music, for example, which right. I actually have gone completely digital on. So when I say right. doom and gloom, it's because I love the format. I love the physical format. I've always and I've always loved it uh, for for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. But yeah, that's why I'm saying doom and gloom. Okay, no, I'm trying to understand that because like say down the road, streaming becomes one to one with in terms of quality with mm -hmm. physical media, mm -hmm. which is clearly not at this point. We'll get into that. Yeah. But um, then is it still doom and gloom? I mean, yeah. is the end goal the trophy of having that, that, thing, that, that you thing that you can look at? Or is it the actual movie and being able to just click, click, you're done. You don't have to get up, put something in somewhere. Yeah. You don't have stuff cluttering up your room. I mean, that's the biggest thing. That For me, my Blu-ray collection... I, I admitted earlier that I haven't really been buying Blu-rays often. Usually they're gifts. Mm -hmm. um, um, or if it's a film that I really, really, yep. really like, then I'll pick it up and then I'll have the UHD version for whenever I decide to take the plunge. Yep. Obviously, I haven't done that yet. Um, but my Blu-ray collection now, they're keeping my, they're elevating my monitor in my office. Right. All of the cases. Yeah. I take, I've taken all of the Blu-rays out and I have them in a, you know, in a, a binder and I access it that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't like it. Like I, I, I'm like you in the sense that, and I'm sure I'm like you in that I like having those trophies somewhere, but my house isn't that big. Yeah. So true. I've only got so much space and I needed something to rise up my monitor. I'm like, well, this is the coolest looking thing that I could think of. Aesthetically, it's aesthetically, a good choice. It's, I think. It's, it's, yeah. it's a good choice aesthetically and I can use it somewhere, but there's not my, my shelves and stuff and, 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 uh, and wall units and stuff in my family room where I actually watch my Blu-rays. Yeah. I can't, there's not nearly enough room in right, there to right. be able to store all that without it looking like shit. Right. So right. That, that's, uh, the, uh, so, so what about you then? Like we've talked about sort of where I'm coming from, where he's coming from. Like, how do you feel about physical media today? Are you, are you buying? Are you? Yeah, I'm, uh, I spend way more money than I should on <laughs> physical media. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So what's, what's attracting you to the physical um, media? Well, I mean, first of all, again, uh, movies, uh, I'm the same way. Like I, I very rarely even watch TV series. Like I yeah. obviously Star Trek and mm -hmm. this and that, but normally it's like, it takes, because they suck up so much time. Yeah. Uh, I just can't really get into things unless yeah. there's like a critical mass of people I know that are like, Oh, you must watch this. Right? Yeah. Cause yeah. I know you will like it. Yep. And, you know, then I'll give it a go. But yeah, movie. I love I love uh, physical media. Um, you know, I have a home theater uh, that I built myself uh, in the basement. When I finished it with you know 120 inch screen, 1080p projector. So I mean, uh, for me, like because I have kids, young kids, I can't go out and watch movies 
uh, all the movies that I want to see right. in theaters, right? Because right, right. uh, to me, that theatrical experience is what I want. That's what yeah. I'm. That's what I'm going after, right? Yeah. And because I can't get it as often as I would like, I can't go out as often, whatever. I want to get as close to simulating that experience as I can at home. Right. So I mean, and physical media is what gets you there, right? So, hundred yeah, um, percent. You know, we can talk about the the quality of the video and the audio and stuff later, but obviously yeah. that's what I'm going after, and that's why I like it. W one more thing I wanted to mention, and um, not that I'm like, I'm not buying as much physical media, and I'm streaming more of my stuff now. Yeah, that's not my preference. If I wanted to watch a film, like if I seriously wanted to sit down and watch a high quality film mm. i would either get the blu-ray out and put it in and watch it through yeah. there instead of streaming it if that if i have that mm. option right um the thing that i don't have is a really good setup right now right. my family or my my family room where my tv's at i've only got one tv i think it's a 50 it's a 58 inch tv 1080p um it's good enough for the most part yeah but it's not optimal and the thing is is there's a lot of light pollution in my room yeah i've yeah. got a tenant underneath so i can't be banging movies yeah, you know, late yeah, yeah, late yeah. in in the, in the hours um i share the tv often with my wife so there's always that conflict yeah um so if i had like that theater then i i would be doing a lot more with physical yeah. media for sure for sure yeah and like it, uh, yeah totally it all depends on the situation you know, i was the same way i didn't really start um, collecting and, and buying them until I actually had a real setup where I could use them. Like I did yeah. buy DVDs and Blu-rays, but I probably didn't get as many yeah. as I would have liked to. Um, part of it was the cost as well. Like, you know, when sure. you're younger, the money is really not there. Yeah. Now it's like the way I look at it is, well, I was, if I was going to, if I can get the, the UHD or the Blu-ray for the cost of two movie tickets, well, that's what I would have spent anyway to go yeah, see it in the theater. Yeah, that's true. So I'm not really, like people are like, oh, why are you buying it? wasting so much money. I'm like, well, you have to understand, this is a substitute for going to the movie theater for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And if that's you right. like the movie, you get yeah, replay out of it. Exactly, yeah. So 100%. I don't really see it as like throwing away money. I'm just like, this is what I would have spent anyway. Yeah, that's an interesting That's an interesting thing that you have a unique uh, perspective on because you're the only uh, one of us three that have kids. Yeah. Um, so that, that, does the di that does change the dynamic a little bit. Um, dynamic? Di did I say dynamic? I said dynamic. Was there an N in there? I said dynamic. I think you skipped this. <laughs> Turn off your headphones. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, but uh, but yeah. So you talked about having like a tenant downstairs. I also have a tenant downstairs, and like my subwoofer is basically off. Yeah. Like it's not it's not on, and and I'm not experiencing the movies the way I'd like to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm basically just making the best out of the, out of the uh, out of the current situation. Mm -hmm. So. I'm obviously buying uh, so this. This stack here is like a mix of these are 4K UHDs, a mix of uh, RJ's and and mine. And we just before uh, jumping on this, we, we watched a bit of First Man. You mentioned that already, but we also watched a scene from The Revenant, and we saw a scene from the the Matt Damon cinematic classic, The Great Wall, <laughs> which I said not... the average wall at best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they uh, yeah that wall doesn't stand much of a chance in that movie, um, but. Uh, but uh, it's it's not a it's not a particularly good movie, but it's one that has a great 4K transfer. Um, so, uh, in in saying that, the reason I even own the Great Wall is not because I love the movie, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's there's a fundamental difference there. Like you're not buying stuff, you would never buy something where you're like, hey, this looks great. I'm divorcing it from the way I feel about the movie. Yeah, and no, you buy it. No, so no. like that's something I would do. Yeah. Uh, did you even see First Man before you bought the 4K no, UHD? No. So that's a complete blind buy. Blind you. buy, but yeah. like I said, I I would have gone to the theater if I had time to see it. Okay, so that's something. Right? Okay, all right. So yeah, that, that's that, something you deeply want to watch. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And that I would get on board for. But yeah, yeah. if it's something like I had no interest in and it just <laughs> looks pretty, no, yeah. I'm good. No, yeah. So, but this could have ended up being eye candy and maybe nothing true. else, right? But yeah, I, I had, but happened to you had interest in it going yeah, yeah. in. I yeah. would not have looked at that movie and been like, I'll see that. <laughs> the, the Great Wall I saw in the theater. So I actually, I, 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 I saw The Great Wall in the theater. Um, it's with, with you, Shang you, you make up 50% of the sales. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's so Whoa. true. Um, it's not a good movie, but it's definitely one that I, it's like a, it's a guilty pleasure and it's a great tech demo. It looks good. Yeah. yeah that was, that was pure eye candy. Yeah. yeah sure. That was, um, but, but yeah, so there's, there's obviously a difference in the I gasm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I first saw that, I mean, if there's anything <sighs> as close to an eye gasm as you can get, I had it. Yeah. It happened to me when I put the gray wall in. I saw that scene for the first time. I was just like, couldn't believe my eyes. It was, yeah, yeah. it's really something else. Um, I was, I, that's actually part, one of the things I was worried about with First Man was the fact that like, 
because of like it's all basically black, white, gray. Yeah. Like, there's not a ton of color. Yeah. That's yeah, right. right. Yeah. But it's still it looks stunning. Yeah. Right. It looks. It right. looks. They they clearly spent a lot of time putting that final scene yeah. together, like the landing, um, and when it goes full IMAX, it's oh. really really impressive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there are different reasons that we that we buy that we buy the uh, the 4K stuff. So the other reason I had that we haven't mentioned yet, you talked about let's just say if streaming came up to the same quality, which we'll actually we'll get into yeah, right yeah. after this, yeah. same quality, okay, yeah. no no difference in quality, which there is um, currently. Would I still buy physical media? And the answer is yes, because what is being dictated as be available to me is being controlled by somebody yeah. else yes so that's one thing now the other answer to that is like okay so direct buy from like uh you know google play or or you know what are the other whatever are the itunes, other itunes play. Play. yeah yeah i'm trying to think of what the other direct buys are so then you own a digital version yes. of this movie but you it's it's not yours so it's subject to what if a company goes out of business servers go down or whatever whatever happens a malicious attack that yeah. brings all these servers this movie is no longer available to you uh, now look I'm, or your kids uh, or your kids and nobody else can watch it yeah, yeah. that's right that's you can right. watch it even but I can't it's not like my kids can log into my Gmail or my Google account or whatever my service oh, is because I might right. not give it to them that's right, right? Yeah. They, don't, they, don't, they can't do that today that's right? true yeah because you can't have yeah, they could log into Netflix, but I mean the other stuff. It's, it's like, like your Gmail account is the key to your yeah, life, basically. Yeah. At this point, you yeah. can't uh, can't have them messing around with your, you know, finances. Just, you know, yeah, you know, like yeah. whatever. But uh, but but that's that's an interesting point. So so somebody else is dictating it, and if they're not dictating it, and you've bought it directly. Somebody else owns whether you are able to watch that or not. If there's no like my my case has always been like if the if the internet goes out, I should be able to. You know, access my favorite stuff, uh, no matter what, and I shouldn't. It shouldn't be under somebody else's control. It there, should be under mine. There, there is one. There's one exception to that, which is uh, I've only I only have this for one movie, and I don't know if this was ever a big thing or whether it was. I feel like it was like a flash in the pan. Sure. But when I bought Interstellar, yeah, the digital copy of Interstellar is actually downloaded onto my PC. Oh, that's why. Like, there's a file. Yeah, it's not. It's not like a digital locker where it's yeah. like, okay, you can stream it at your convenience. I you're actually, not streaming I have it, it, you're I have, downloading yeah, it. Yeah, I have an MP4 or whatever there. But that's the only movie I have for some reason. So yeah. I don't know, maybe it was a Nolan thing, yeah. maybe he insisted on that. Because yeah. he's anti-streaming, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the only one. I'd have to check Flipster too. Yeah. So some of the ones, that, it was some of the earlier DVDs that are Blu-rays that I had bought, but I had actually got them through iTunes. So you can offline them on your computer you and you have them. I don't think they're downloaded as an MP4, so it's not easily transferable. Or maybe yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, I think Flickster allows you to offline movies too. But I guess the question then is, you know, with the, the physical media argument, if the internet goes out, then what happens? That's kind of the same argument with music. If you're streaming it all, then what? You're currently offlining it, and obviously with storage constraints for music versus, you know, yep. 4K yeah. movies, yep. it's a different ballgame. But yep. then down the road when storage becomes bigger and bigger and bigger yep. then maybe it's no longer an issue maybe offlining those films and then you have your digital media at your fingertips with or without with internet, internet then you're sitting pretty that's true that's yeah. true but um, again we're not there we're definitely well not the there. music thing i would say music yeah. i would say the music thing is there yeah yes you know we didn't even look at cd sale numbers right now and that's how you would sell music today if it were physical right that hasn't mm -hmm. changed <laughs> i hope well, i didn't miss it vinyl. Oh, vinyl. Oh, vinyl. Yeah, vinyl, vinyl, vinyl. vinyl i would bet well, I don't know if I'd bet, but I would. Yeah, I would bet that vinyl outsells CDs at this point. I would. Yeah, guess. Have, yeah, have, it, it it does actually. Yeah. So they're uh, vinyl outsells vinyl, yeah. CDs. Uh, hold on. I mean, well, sorry, since vinyl you've... vinyl accounts. For, it's uh, yeah. My notes were that it accounts for one third of all physical media sales. So no, it doesn't outnumber CDs. But that's, I mean, how many other physical formats are there? There's basically just CD and vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, I, like, I can't like... imagine, I heard cassette is making a comeback, but that yeah, can't no. be more that than seems, 0.1%. That seems a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. All right. So basically, yeah, so I, I, it's one third vinyl, two thirds yeah. CD. You're still listening to CDs. I do. Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I actually asked him when we were coming to his house Friday night. I was like, do you have a CD player in the basement? <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> like, he... I... Is it next to your VHS player? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... it's 
that's when you asked me that i'm like oh that is a deep cut right there that's that's even more strange than asking someone if they have a record player yeah like um, that's almost strange that, that's yeah. what i'm it's saying it's like hey do you have a record player is it kind of like oh you know because they've they've i feel like we're in that area of the you know the vinyl comeback right yeah yeah um but asking was like, "Hey, do you have a CD player?" Seems like that's like that's the equivalent of asking somebody if they have it. They have like a tape deck. Yeah, you know, like it's connected to their home theater. Hey, so, man, I'm bringing my eight track collection. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she got something I can so play. So that's it actually on? interesting. I was just thinking about this before. A track. I don't. Even, what does an A track look like? Does it look like almost as, how big is it? Do you know? Does I think know? they were somewhere between a cassette and a VHS. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, because yeah, they're like they're that. they're pretty chunky, right? Yeah. yeah. So. I'm wondering again. Now I'm thinking. Really, should look this up before. But a track came before. No, sorry. Vinyl came first. Vinyl yeah. was the first yeah. method of getting music yeah. in yeah. a mass market consumption. I'm sure there's someone out there that knows more about this than I do. But I'm I'm probably oversimplifying. A track was the first uh, portable, mm. I guess, like form. Like you'd have that yeah. in the car, yeah. right? You'd have yeah. an a track player at home, yeah. Um, and then. After vinyl, what did we get? We got tapes. We got cassettes, yeah, cassettes right? Yeah. And then after cassettes, we got CDs. After CDs, we got digital. Super audio CDs. Super SLC audio CDs. CDs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no. If you want to get technical? Let's get right? let's get into the nooks and crannies of this. <laughs> There's also what? there was also DVD audio standard. No, that's right. I remember uh, that. But yeah. again, these are exceedingly DVDs. rare. Like they're yeah. not very common. Um, how do we get here? No, the reason <laughs> talking about the audio reason, this much. The reason I'm, we need I, the moderator. Man. Yeah, yeah sorry, moderator. sorry. The reason I was asking about it was because I was looking at size. I'm like, are things generally just getting smaller? Like for for physical media for for for, for movies. Yeah. You had your you you still have or your dad still has like a 35 millimeter reel yes. like uh, yeah. system right, yeah. Yeah. and then like that's like that's massive right, right? and then you had v, like VHS yeah. And then you had like, you know, all your Betamax variants and all that stuff. And then we had DVDs. Now we're down yeah. to CD size and you had Blu-rays and you had 4Ks and then you have digital. Yeah. So yeah, I think ge- things are generally so. Oh, no, no, no. In there, you also had the um, laser, disc. laser disc, yes. which grew. Yeah. The size grew. grew. It actually yeah. like got bigger than a VHS, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, is a, which is an oddity, but I think that's the only one I can, fi- I can think of that actually like it spiked back up physically did, being yeah. larger. Yeah. And then started getting smaller again. Yeah. Um, so really, we're basically trending downwards. Things are smaller, more portable, mm. easier. I think people are just constantly wanting it to be easy. Mm. Like, easy to easy to download. So Right. Um, but what you were mentioning before about having all the stuff offline and available, um, that's, a, that, that's an interesting... I'd have to think about that. Like, if that were really a thing. If, I, if that were really a thing and I was able to have the same... Like same quality, highest quality, all downloaded offline, and available even if the internet is out. Then we could talk. Yes, exactly. Right. I think we could talk then. Like, how do you feel about that scenario? That sort uh, of pie in the sky scenario. Yeah, I mean, pie in the sky. That sounds great, but again, it, it just comes down to the content. Can I have that, but with the library of my choosing? That's right? what. That's you know what I mean. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that scares me about that is digital in general, right? Like my, you were talking about music. All my music is pretty much through Google Music. I offline almost everything. I got a whole wad of MP3s, but I don't really listen to those. To get new music, I'm like, I, I'm just, I subscribe just like a lot of other yeah. people do, right? If that became, if that disappeared, I'd be up shit's creek when it comes to music. Like, I got nothing, like I got, like I said, I got some MP3s, but like I don't have any tapes. I don't have it, well. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any tapes I can find right now. Like I don't. Yeah. But you, you, ha- you, you're, you're buying music the same way I buy movies. Yeah. Which is yeah. like, if you like something and it gets more play, you buy it. Yeah, right? I do. I, I buy a lot of vinyls now. Um, now, I, I don't think like, uh, I'm not an audiophile to the point where I'm some sort of snob that thinks vinyl is the be all and end all of audio and right. it sounds so good. Yeah, and yeah. Therefore this must be the only way you consume it. Like, right. There's nothing like that. Like truth be told, like, I think, uh, you know, when you, when you're talking about high bit rate, uh, digital audio or lossless, uh, audio, yeah. uh, you know, on, on a decent speaker system, like in my basement, um, it's impressive. Like it sounds really good. Mm. Right? Um, it sounds better than streaming, uh, stuff. So again, I actually do buy like some digital things, yep. uh, digital downloads specifically, but, 
but yeah, like, does my vinyl uh, sound measurably better than, uh, you know, high uh, lossless audio? I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I, I, maybe I should do a blind test next time you're at my place. Yeah, like, like blindfold. Yeah, and then see if I... But I don't know if I could or not. But, I mean, part of the reason, again, that I, I really do like it is, um, you know, especially with vinyl, they, they, the, the artwork is, is really important, right? Yes. So, again, this is one thing where in you're big, talking about yeah. things shrinking. Yeah. CD, jewel cases and stuff, the stuff they mm. put in, you couldn't see anything. Yeah, like, the yeah. cover art was terrible. You know, the stuff inside That's was right. barely legible. Yeah. Like, it was horrible, right? Yeah. Like, but now you, you go back to this, you know, larger form factor, and now all of a sudden... You know the the artwork that's on the cover is is part of the experience, right? Yeah. Like going through the some of them have photo books and lyrics and mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. that you that you would never have that right in a digital format. So that's, that's uh, true. That's always a nice thing. I, and actually, I actually um, in my basement I hang a lot of them up on the wall. So I actually kind of rotate them. That was another reason. It was just like to me, it was like rather than you know just a picture. That's like kind of my wall art, and it yeah. changes. All the time, right? I just cycle them in and out, and you know, I look at the cover, my favorite covers, right? Yeah. So that's a good example of buying something that's not necessarily measurably better. Let's say, let's say it's yeah. not. Well, even if it wasn't, yeah. it wouldn't change your decision. No, I, I still would buy them. Yeah. And 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 a lot of it is because as well because of uh, for anyone that's read uh, my blog, Tiki mm. Talk knows that the genre of my choosing uh, is is reggae. Yeah. Um. So I actually uh, genuinely do want to purchase them because I want them to be able to make money from this, right? I want these yeah, artists to yeah. be able to make a living yeah, from, yeah. from this music they're making, right? Because uh, in contrast to a lot of these, you know, bigger pop artists and stuff who can make millions from streaming revenue mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. uh, these guys are only seeing pennies from yeah. streaming, right? Um, so yeah, so it, it makes me feel good. I feel like I'm doing a good thing and I feel like I'm contributing to these artists continuing their work, right? Like, because I want to hear more of what they're going to make. So if I'm not putting... You know my money in their pocket then why should they keep doing it yeah, right? yeah that's a good point that's a good point like so that. yeah so that's that's a good example of just aesthetics yep right we're yep. just talking about aesthetics uh, coming back to the to movies look at these look at these cases they're fucking tiny like they, and they've been, like, they're only getting smaller right they're only getting more slim they're only getting smaller um, uh, some DVDs and and Blu-rays come in like special edition like digi books and all of that yeah. stuff. And I love that Steel stuff books, yeah. I fucking love it it's just there's something about a library of mm. of movies. So we're kind of getting into sort of like the second phase of this, which is like, what does like what's our relationship with physical media? Are we still buying? So Justin, it sounds like you're not. You're you're getting them as gifts and yeah. and things like that. Right. You have them stowed away when you when you need them. And a lot of it is about physical space. Yes, it's just available. Yeah. About physical house, space. Right? Uh, and but the thing is, is when I do finally decide, because the other thing that's really prevented me from starting to go down that upgrade path of buying, wanting to buy physical media and mm. going back to that to, to those roots, yeah, is cost, and that's coming oh, down yeah. now. Oh, like yeah. going down, yeah. like going, getting to the 4K platform, you got to get a new TV. You've got to probably get a new, uh, you got to get new audio, yeah. audio cables. You've got to get a new player. Yep. Yeah. Depending on your audio setup, you might have to get a new receiver. Like, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of upfront costs to that, and then on top of that, you've got to look at your library and be like, well, which ones of these can I upgrade now from Blu-ray to UHD? Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all of that, and like I said, my setup right now is good enough for what I need it for, and I don't have a good enough environment to really justify making that upgrade yet. Yeah. And again, the costs. So yeah, no once the costs time. come down, then maybe I'll start going down that route and start purchasing physical media again uh, as much as I used to. Because back at my parents' place, Bookshelves filled with Blu-rays and DVDs. Yeah. Um, but just lately, just haven't haven't really done it. And there's been enough content for me to be able to consume movies on Netflix and yep. not Hulu. What's it called? Um, Craves it. Craves. Crave. Oh, yeah, okay. Crave. We we have as well. So there's enough content in those sources that I'm good for the most part. And I go to the theaters often. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I do uh, both as well. I mean, I go to the theater and I and I buy and I buy the the movies. Um, so for the the upgrade costs, so even let's say you didn't have to upgrade, let's just talk about physical media in general. Like yeah. Abstracted. Blu-rays, you have a current setup. You got you know uh, a decent TV. You've got five point one in your yeah. house. Um, there, it. What is stopping you from buying Blu-rays? Just I I. The only Blu-rays I will buy is if there's a movie that is not available on any of the streaming services and I really want to watch it. That's it. That's really that's that's the only time okay. I'll do it. But for the most part, 
there's not a lot of those movies or if somebody's got them i'll just borrow it for yeah. a day okay you know um that's basically it before yeah. when when you know those restrictions weren't in place it was just like yolo like i like this movie i'm buying it yeah. but now that i have the the opportunity to watch it another way potentially eh, i don't really need to not see you know a few pixels here and there in really dark sure. scenes it's not really that big sure. of a deal sure yeah i know i like this because um i actually didn't know I, after christmas you had scored a couple of like 4k you got yeah. the 4k version of halloween yeah both of them carpenter's <laughs> original the original halloween. one and the 2018 one carpenter's yeah. original halloween must have the most releases on dvd on Blu-ray ever next to like the Evil Dead. You want to hear something funny too? <laughs> like they're I, like 18 versions. I brought that with me today because I wanted to see it on 4K. Oh. And then when I was looking in my bag, I picked up the 2018 one. So I was like, <laughs> fuck! Wrong one! <laughs> um, oh shit, I would have loved to have seen the I know, yeah. Either. But um, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate but like I said, I right now I just don't feel like I have the setup to justify getting those high quality yeah, no, things, and, and right? I think that makes. I think that actually makes sense. But that being said, yeah. when it does, I mean, you better believe I'm spending a shit ton of money on Blu-ray <laughs> yeah. and UHD. Like, it, there's no question. Right. Like, I already right. know. Like, I'll slowly start drip acquiring a few things that I like, which I did. Like, I made sure that those Blu-rays are were on there because I want those to be the first. Some of the first ones I love because right. or first ones I own because I love those films. Um, but the day I upgrade, I'm also spending a shit ton of money on Blu-rays right. for sure. Right. No question. How. Uh, historically like when we were growing up yeah. i've always i felt this very uh this very um it's so different for for people who are growing up now with streaming services mm -hmm. than when we were growing up when we had cable and essentially vhs and dvd well, i guess we're yeah, like a little bit later a little on, bit yeah. later on yeah. but uh like do you think so so I, let me just, let me tell you what i think and then we'll, I'll, I'll throw it to you guys but basically whether it's vinyl, tape, uh, VHS, and to a lesser extent, Blu-ray, sorry, DVD, um, I think the physical action of putting something on that requires physical uh, interaction, like getting up, putting a mm -hmm. vinyl on, dropping the needle, getting up, putting a, 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 a VHS in, or a DVD, or a movie in, and watching the movie, I think that that physical action there's so there's like a I have very fond memories of doing that, mm -hmm. and when we were growing up, we had come in a little bit. We like. had we had a couple of uh, movies, and a lot of those movies you build these relationships with those movies because those were the only movies that we had. Yeah. So yeah. when we went down to go be like, what are we watching tonight? It wasn't like I had the opposite feeling now. Yeah. Which is like analysis paralysis. Where yeah. I'm like fuck yes. it, I don't know yeah. what brand new thing I want to watch today. It's like a sensory overload. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea. And then I'm just like, you know, I'm like shaking. Yeah. And then I fucking just end up watching something inconsequential. <laughs> Inconse totally like some, I'll just throw on some dumb slasher movie. And I'm like, oh, I'll just watch this because I don't know. Or you, or you, or you, or you just end up watching an hour's worth of Netflix trailers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, I'm tired now. I'm going to bed. I looked at so many <laughs> menus and I'm like, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's so different. So back when we were growing up, it was like, what are we going to watch today? Like, here are the 12 movies that we own. Or we could go to Blockbuster right, and yeah. like rent one. And that's yeah. a big deal, yeah, right? That's, yeah. a, that's a totally big deal. And you can, you can rent stuff today. But like, you got to go, like there's a, there's a massive amount of effort yeah. involved in getting in the car with your parents, yeah, taking you to yeah. ride your bike to Blockbuster or whatever, and coming home yeah. with a new movie and, and watching it. So and, and and not only that is like when you're you're describing the process of choosing a movie. Yeah. That's analysis process. That's, that could be just by yourself. Yeah. That, right. That is, if you're with other people, it's like no, I've seen that. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. And it's like, what the hell, man? We got to pick something. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it was like when you have a limited choice. Well, it's like you've you know, seen it's, it. It's not like you're trying to find something you've never seen. It's like oh, what do I feel like watching that I've already seen before? Like what? Yes. I, what what familiar thing can I pick from here that everybody will enjoy? Yeah. Together. Yeah. Right? Like. So how many times, did, like when we were growing up, like did we just throw on like things like Big Trouble in Little China or yeah. like The Goonies or you know The Sandlot or whatever? Just like yeah. they're mostly like crowd pleaser, like yeah. growing up, like Transformers the yeah, movie. Transformers. Like how often did we? Do... Or the original Batman. Exactly. Oh, the original Batman's Batman. a great example because we all knew that movie yeah. by heart. Blade yeah. on VHS. Wait, <laughs> you watch Blade? We camping. Went camping. <laughs> what? <laughs> we took an old like black and white TV. Yeah. 
And my dad, my dad's video camera actually at that time connected to the VHS machine. That's how it recorded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so we so... had a VHS player and a black and white TV and we're watching Blade <laughs> in the tent trailer. Oh my God. That was so fun. I remember that because that's when we... <laughs> Oh, that's when that's when I realized this is an awesome movie. Yeah. <laughs> but we watched it like four times. It yeah. was like we were there for three days, three four days camping with our family. So, so this is an example of just like, um, you know, beggars can't be choosers in that case, right? Yeah, like yeah. this is what you've got. You build those relationships. So like I wouldn't have this relationship with Transformers, the movie that I do now, if it didn't come out on. VHS. Which is still nowhere on streaming, as far as I know. Exactly. <laughs> Great example. That's a great. That's a good example. It's mm-hmm. not stream. I wouldn't have this relationship with uh, Big Trouble in Little China or Batman '89 or um, or Jurassic Park mm-hmm. or you know like all this stuff that came out that I really loved back when I was younger and it was all on VHS. I wouldn't have that relationship if I had so much choice. Yeah. Um, now, I don't, for me, that's a nostalgic thing. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. So I was just yeah. kind of like wondering what you guys thought about, like, what was your relationship with VHS, or VHS or physical media, where you only have a certain amount to choose from, and that is not getting refreshed unless you spend dollars. You know, very, very similar to yours. Um, eighty nine, Batman eighty nine, perfect example. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, Ninja yeah. Turtles! Yeah, yeah. A million times. Ninja like, Turtles. Yeah. Predator. Uh, yeah. Fuck. There were so many. Terminator, there were so many yeah. films. Aliens. 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 Yeah. Actually, yeah. Aliens. I got into a little late, later in life. Yeah. But yeah, the Terminator series, especially Terminator Two. Um, yeah, maybe that. I never really thought about that. That's a good point. Um, maybe that's why I had such a relationship that I rewatched a lot of those films. Yeah. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm. And, fuck. And the other thing is, as well, like uh, I mean, I remember buying. Uh, DVDs. I don't remember buying a ton of VHS, but I mean, because the, the thing that you could do at that time you was record off the TV. <laughs> yeah. so I didn't I tell you how shit, I watched like those. Gremlins. <laughs> I had Gremlins. You Gremlins, I had, like, 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 yeah, I had yeah. a lot of stuff that I recorded on VHS. Yeah. Right? Do you so have you that fe- brown, the brown box, the, With the top yeah, loader yeah. thing, the top loader? Or no, 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 no. It was like a brown digital, like a D scrambler, so you could get like HBO and paper. Oh no, I didn't stuff. have that. I oh, just had yeah. like that's that's, hardcore. that's yeah. old. That's pirating yeah. before pirating. <laughs> that was like. That's it was like the black beard of <laughs> is pirating. The, is that the Carpasoli household? The, no, man. There's a lot of folks in Mississauga that were, were doing that same <laughs> uh, thing. We'd go to my funny. friend's place and watch like wrestling live. Like they'd have all the pay per views. Oh, yeah, oh my god. Yeah. Bash uh, at the beach and shit. <laughs> in your house, WrestleMania all day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I know. yeah that's where we got a lot of our VHS yeah. collection. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and and uh, truth be told, I the, the amount of original VHSs is, is dwarfed by the amount yeah. of, uh, you know, copied VHSs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. So, uh, yeah. anyway, so, sorry, you were saying before that, were, were you just talking about the cop like, that, uh, that they weren't... Yeah, original. no, I was just saying, I mean, a lot of times that relationship became even more personal because I recorded it myself. Oh, yeah, that's right? right. Like, I was standing there in front of the TV, pa- like, I want to make a good recording, so I paused it before the commercial oh, right? Started again, just started in time, right? Or that's hardcore. It, right? So it was even more personal because it's, essentially, I created it, right? Yeah. <laughs> directed no, by James Cameron, <laughs> edited by Ajay Tinku. <laughs> Written and directed by James Cameron, edited by Ajay Tinku. I like that. Just add the little. <laughs> It's just an insert shot of him holding. <laughs> He's just holding a title card, edited by a <laughs> That's oh. so funny. Don't be, you know, don't be modest, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll set up your IMDb page later on. Um, he edited all these movies <laughs> to some degree in the Tinku household. I also I also have uh, the '92 and '93 Jays uh, World Series games. On VHS. On VHS? Well. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Somewhere in my parents' basement. So that, so that's it. Let's take that as an example. If I wanted to watch that right now, I'd go to YouTube. There's probably a clip of the 92, 93. And, you know, like... Right. And, and uh, uh, they, they're back-to-back. So both World Series mm-hmm. ending. Mm-hmm. There's probably a clip of that. So um, what makes the physical recording that you've got uh, more meaningful than the one that I can just get off of YouTube right now. If we wanted to watch it right now, we could we could bring it up on a laptop. Right, yeah. I mean, I don't know that you could watch the whole game, for example. Oh, no, so you record right. the whole game. Yeah, I, oh, have, okay. I have entire yeah. games recorded. Remember the EP mode, right? Because baseball games are long. Yeah. So like the EP mode where it extended looked really crap. Play? Extended play. Extended play. The tracking stuff <laughs> in there, right? Like, it was kind of pretty awful. Oh. Right? But, but you have the whole game, right? You have the, you have the commercials in between. Yeah. 
right? The, the capture of that era. Right? I'm just saying, like, if I wanted to go back and watch the actual game, I don't know if I could find the entire games online. You're absolutely right. So that's a good that's a good example. Somebody would have the clip where Cardi, Carter, like Joe Carter, knocks it out of the park. Yeah. For the Jays, but they won't have the rest of the game leading up to that. Yeah. I almost guarantee you, there's like, I, I, you know what? I'll bite my tongue. Maybe it's out there. Yeah, like maybe if you subscribe maybe took, yeah. to Major League Baseball's archives, streaming thing, maybe they have the archives and you can stream the whole game. Maybe. Yeah, I don't maybe. Know. Yeah. I'm not that big of a sports buff. But you've got buff. it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. You got it. And if the internet goes out, you still got it. Yeah. Like if yeah. some, you know. I don't have a VHS player anymore, but I still but got it. But you still got <laughs> <laughs> I could hold it up to the light. <laughs> like, it's just like. <laughs> You also have a copy of Return of the Jedi on. Uh, I have Star Wars oh, on uh, on uh, th- on eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. Yeah. So uh, uh, the New projector. Hope. Yeah, New, New Hope. Hope. It's actually only half of New Hope. One so for reel. for a lot, yeah, because it came in two reels, but we only got one. Yeah, I think my dad, I don't know, bought it, you know, somewhere at a garage sale or, yeah. bar, you know, like the the dumpster bin at Walmart. Like, yeah, where yeah. we didn't have Walmart. Walmart. Then, but, yeah, it was like. Kmart. So for a long time growing up, uh, I I thought that was the end of Star Wars. Like I didn't know. You mean there was another half of the? Yeah, movie? I didn't know there was another half. Like I only when they escaped the Death Star, I thought that was the end. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> the whole so then when I saw the whole scene with the Death Star trench and everything, I was blown away. Wait, I was like, <laughs> That's, that's wonderful. Really funny. So that's there's an example of physical media utterly failing us, yeah. right? Because yeah. half of it's missing. They don't come with instructions. <laughs> they don't come with instructions. Be like this movie. And there was like, nothing on it that indicated you know real one of two nothing. Like it was yeah, just, oh, that's yeah. crazy. So so yeah. So I I mean I'm postulating that physical media um, builds a relationship with content that that streaming uh, can't because right. it's it's so fresh and so easy. And I think that you build relationships with things that, and this is this is over this is over exaggerating, but hardship. Like when I say hardship, I mean half of Star Wars was missing, yeah. or I had to get up, and this tape was always really messed up. But I loved this yeah. movie so much, and I was just like, I I watched. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of. I was watching the Thirteenth Warrior, which mm-hmm. I actually really enjoy, uh, uh, and I think feel like it's an underrated John McTiernan movie, but. I was watching Thirty Three Warrior on uh, on VHS, and there was always one part of the movie that the tracking just messed up all yeah. the time, and I could never fix it. But I'd always watch it through that tracking thing. But I had this really, when I watched that movie that many times, if that tracking problem wasn't yeah. there, I'm trying to like figure out like what's going on in these yeah, four minutes yeah. and what people are saying, you know, like that when I quote unquote hardship, really what it is is just like a relationship with the media. That is tactile. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that, yeah. That's not... And it's not always new and always getting refreshed. So I, I'm postulating that you only build those kinds of relationships when you have physical media. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd argue against the physical media's requirement for that. Because, like, I think it's the... I think it's discovering it and really liking it and rewatching it. Whether it's physical or digital. For instance, mm. like, um, there's a lot of comedy that's being pushed onto Netflix these days, right? I, there's one comedian, uh, Tom Segura, that I just randomly came across. It, the first poster for his special, um, I can't remember the name of it. It'll come to me. But it's just his face. And I just thought it was funny. And I'm like, okay, let me see what this guy's about. Yeah. First five minutes, I was laughing my ass off. And then since then, I've had such a, like, anytime he's doing any comedy, like, if there's new specials, I'm glued to the TV for that first special. I'll rewatch right. some of them because some of his bits make me laugh. Yeah. Um, or they're just something comfortable to have in the background that I've, I've heard his comedy enough times that it's not something I need to focus on, but it'll still give me some sort of stimulation. Right. Um, I've also subscribed to his podcast. Like now I feel like I've, he's one of these comics that's like ingrained in my life. Like he's a person that I like listening to in one capacity or another. Right. Um, I think it was through the discovery of him that it felt like it was kind of mine. Yeah, you made that connection. There, there was an ownership of sure, that. That sure. it didn't feel like it was just, you know, out there for the masses. It was like something I found. No one was talking about him at the time that, you know, of the circle of friends that I had. And, uh... You, and, you discovered him. Yeah. You, like, you, you found something really cool and that yeah. was unique to you. Yeah. So, the, so just carrying that one couple steps further, what happens when the streaming service you discovered him, him on doesn't serve his content anymore? I'd buy it. I would absolutely buy it. Right. Yeah. Maybe not in a physical capacity, though. Depend. I mean, it's not. You might buy. You might buy the digital. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll buy, I'll buy it in whatever capacity it's out there, or find other ways to support the artist that sure. I enjoy listening to. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Or watching. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that, that's uh, that's interesting. One last 
thing I wanted to comment about sort of like that physical interaction where I would counter your argument is music. Um, I feel like the ceremony of setting up a vinyl and dropping the needle on the vinyl and having that process of getting through, getting to the spot that you want mm -hmm. on a, on a, on a, a vinyl uh, record is actually uh, something that builds that relationship further because yeah. right now, digital music, I want to listen to something, I load it up. If I don't like it, I skip to the next song. I skip to the moment in the song that I want. I can load up a new album, new artist, whenever I want. How, like wherever I want. Yeah, but vinyl, vinyl to digital media is not apple to app, apples to apples. It's right? music. Yeah, that's what. No, but vinyl in particular, right? Like what? Do you yeah. Mean? So what? Sorry. When I, let, let me let me complete the vinyl. Answer. You complete really it. have to like that's find what, it. Like that's, that's a, what I mean. So yeah. So what I mean to say is the experience of listening to digital music. It there is less of an emotional connection than listening to vinyl because when someone puts on a vinyl, they drop it. They drop the needle on the first track of a record. Let's say it's a new new record. They never heard it before. Okay. They drop it on there, and they don't like the song that's playing right now. Yes. Right? Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> Either yeah. you get your ass up off the couch, go yeah. over there and fucking fiddle with the needle. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm not an enthusiast, so I, I don't know if there's an easy way to do this or not. For me, I'm always like, well, I don't yeah. know, fucking like yeah. skip a couple of rings and go to the next track or whatever. You won't do that. You're basically forced to listen to the album the way the artist... Intended. Intended, right. because they, they put tracks one after the other, and there's usually a method to that madness, Sure, typically. Yeah. So that relationship, being forced to listen to those tracks that immediately you can't have ADD. You mm. can't have ADD with vinyl. Yeah. But when I'm listening to it on digital, like the new Jesse Royal album, yeah. and I, could, I was like listening to it and I'm playing through it, I'm playing through the track, nope, no, nope, like yeah. no, nope, no. Nope. And then I'm skipping through these songs. If I had listened to that on vinyl at first, I'd play it, and I'd be like, I don't like this song. I got to I got to listen to it. <laughs> and, so, like, and it's funny it. because yeah, yeah, like and we talked about it and I said I was like you should give that album another chance cuz I was like that too. When yeah. I listened to it at first I only had it through streaming and I listened to a few of the songs and I, I skipped the ones I didn't like or and then I got the vinyl and then I had to listen to it the whole thing and then it just grew on me. Yeah. Right? Like so I actually ended up enjoying it more because of that uh you know, I had to listen to the songs the way in the order in the order that the artist intended and the, then i had to flip it over and listen to the other like that was just it right yeah, and, there it, was and, no, it, yeah. and it um you know it was good that way and, and i think the other thing is uh you know i maybe this is getting a bit esoteric but i think there is some weight or credence to the fact that uh in terms of at, le at least your your memory uh I, I think there is something to be said for you know the more senses you engage I think the richer that memory is, right? So when you're talking right. about a vinyl, you're not just yeah. talking about hearing, right? You're talking about the tactile, right? Yeah. Putting the, the record down. You're talking about the visual, the cover art, right? There's three senses right there that you're engaging, right? Yeah. And I, I just, I, like, I feel like that makes, that does make a difference, right? Now, maybe it's just nostalgia, you know, being a dirty little whore, right? And it's just making you think <laughs> that it's better than it really was. <laughs> but as dirty little whores are. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, but that's, right? Like, that's your, I, I'm just saying, like, that's, I think that's how... The psychology of, that's, of it, yeah, that's an works, interesting right? point. The ritual of putting yeah. down the record. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a romanticism associated with yeah. that. Whether you buy into that or not, I think is really an individual individual thing. I missed the vinyl era. The era, my dad, that was my dad's era, and I was yeah. all like tape cassettes. So lesser extent, bringing it back to movies, I think that you know, watching things on VHS. It's same sort of experience, like oh, you got to watch this part in this movie, and I got to yeah. go find it, yeah. right? And when you're trying to find something on a VHS, fast forward, rewind, like yeah. basically you're rewatching parts of this movie that you you didn't intend to like yeah. watch. You just got to find what you're looking for. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at in terms of like the emotional connection with experiencing something that typically now we can, is now content is just a salad bar. Mm -hmm. You know, like you take what you want, you leave the rest. I never, I never enjoyed trying to find anything on a VHS player. Because the thing is, at that well, point, I would say that you enjoyed it. No, no. Yeah, but what I'm yeah, saying yeah, is, I, it didn't, it. it didn't add to the experience for me at all. It was a complete hindrance. When they came out with <laughs> oh, DVD, yeah. I was like, "This is the fucking best." <laughs> Chapters, like, like this is amazing. For instance, if I got Batman versus Superman on VHS <laughs> and I had to fast forward two hours to the goddamn one good part in the film, I would have been upset. But with this, I could be like, mm, warehouse scene. And now with Blu-rays and shit, now I could bookmark that yeah, shit and go right to where I needed to go. That's true. There's, yeah. So I, I can't argue against I, that. I don't, I, 
I don't, for, for, that's why I was saying about vinyl is I feel like that's a completely <sighs> different beast because that's not something you can really fast forward. I guess you can. Yeah, I don't know you're, enough you're about it, but you could kind of just changing keep, tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just keep on moving the needle around. Yeah, but, yeah, but, uh, that's but with VHS, I mean, it's a little bit more precise. And then obviously as things go on, it becomes even more precise. Right, yeah. right. We live in an era where you can switch on a dime. Yeah, and but I do uh, the the fact that you guys brought up of that you are listening to the album the way that the artist intended. I love yeah. that. I love that. That's I try that's to important. I try to give when I'm listening to it on Google Play. Let's say I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but I know the controls at my fingertips. Yeah, yeah, and you know I'm so entitled that I'm like, why do I have to listen to this? I can just skip yeah, to the next yeah. song. Well, yeah. one one of the criteria though as well when I buy vinyls is I have to be willing to listen to the whole album. Like I won't buy something where. I know it only has one or two good songs. Right? Sure. Like, yeah. So it's like, that's kind of. But you buy new albums. You I buy do. Stuff, I do. You I buy do stuff that albums. that you haven't heard a track on. Is that true? Uh rarely. Like I think oh, maybe no, I okay. pre-ordered like Protege's album. Yeah. Without yeah. listening to it. Yeah. I think all the others I had heard, you had heard first. Something. Okay. So you heard something. Yeah. Right. Right. That that makes sense. So that's kind of, uh, in terms of in terms of like what physical media means to us was there anything else you guys wanted nope, to talk no, about I that think that's, well, uh, i also pre-ordered damien's album yeah <laughs> yes, yes. Right to it. without listening to it yeah. yeah um so the last thing i wanted to mention was quality right so we talked about vinyl mm -hmm. uh, um being like we're not really sure whether vinyl is a better quality i'm sure there's a lot of people that would tell us mm. it, is, it is it is i, I remember i so you mentioned uh, but, uh blind yeah. blind tests I did that at a friend's place, and the only difference that was slightly better was really, really high frequency noises. We were listening to Metallica, yeah. so it was yeah, on the yeah, high yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and and I we, I didn't research it going in. It was just I was listening to one, I was listening to the other, and, and somebody said, uh, "So what do you hear that's different?" I said, "One sounds a little more crisp on the hi hats," and he's like, "That was the vinyl one." So then he looked it up. Yeah, and that that was exactly what it was. Yeah, but so I, that aside, I, that's yeah, like I I. Uh... Like when I I demoed stuff at Bay Blue Radio, um, like this Frighteners album on CD and on vinyl. Yeah. And uh, now, granted, the setup that the guy had, the speakers were far better than what I own. Mm -hmm. The amp, every like all the equipment was better than what sure. I had. And uh, and I I I, th I think the vinyl sounded better as well, but it wasn't a blind test. I knew what I was putting in, and I knew yeah, yeah. when it was CD, when it was vinyl. So it right. wasn't a blind test. But to me. It did sound better on on that you know expensive equipment. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So I think I think it's just harder to quantify. Yeah, I guess is yeah, what yeah, I was getting sure. at. Right. So there's an aesthetic with vinyl, larger print. You were talking about tactile. You were talking about art. Yeah. Everything using it as wall art, all that stuff. Let's talk about movies. Mm -hmm. But uh, and one more after that. But we'll talk about movies. Um, for sorry, a physical movie. The question is, we have everyone is moving to streaming. These guys have stopped making UHD players. They're like, "Hey, look, everyone's using streaming. We're not, we're not making enough money off of these things, mm -hmm. right?" Mm -hmm. So, is streaming, uh, in terms of quality, streaming versus UHD Blu-ray? I wanted to talk a little bit about, and just maybe a little bit of education mm -hmm. about why they're different, uh, really quick. And I know you have some notes that I'm not going to try and uh, memorize, but yeah. um, can you tell me a, a couple of statistics about? The 4K, uh, or, or yeah, let's do 4K UHD versus 4K Netflix. Where we're, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think yeah. it's it's good to talk about where we're going and sort of that right now. Yeah. 4K yeah. is probably the best. Yeah, we don't have to yeah. go backwards. Yeah. Yeah, so for 4K stuff, so the streaming, um, so the bit rates uh, for Netflix are 16 megabits per second to yep. up to 25, up to 25. Per second, and and I, those go by frame rates. So I think it was twenty four frames per second was 16, sixteen. Yeah, and I think they go as high as sixty oh, frames no per way. second on okay. some. So I've I've run some metadata on the Roku while I'm watching a four K. I was watching uh, Frontier, yeah. which is shot native four K. Yeah, here in Canada, and uh, looking at the metadata, peaks at sixteen. It actually just like the, okay. the, the the download rate like it doesn't go okay. beyond that, right. and it goes up to twenty one sixty, which is uh, right four K resolution. So yeah. that lines up so yeah so but so I, I think they must have some content that goes up to 60 I frames seen per second like that, i haven't let's say yeah. yeah okay so i think that's that range 16 to 25, 25. is uh yeah. you know, 24 versus 60 frames per second mm -hmm. there whereas uh uhd the bit rate is 128 megabits per second right. peaks yeah which is a lot a lot more a lot more <laughs> and these like triple layer blu-rays are like 100 gigs of data 100 gig capacity are yeah. like 60 or 70 something like that so that's that's interesting. Let's just talk about what that what that means. 
because that's that doesn't mean it's not very meaningful, right? Well, what's a bit rate? Let's start there. So bit yeah. rate's the number of bits that you can pump through per second for yeah. anything that you're watching. Yeah. Right? So how much? So you have your resolution, yes. right? Your resolution is how many pixels are on the screen. That's not going to change. 4K, mm. Netflix, and 4K UHD contain the same number of yeah. pixels. Right. Really what we're talking about is what's contained inside every given pixel. Right. So the bit rate is how much information you can back those pixels with. Correct. I, I probably grossly... Uh, no, no, that's uh, about right. Uh, anyway, so, so what is it that a 16 megabits per pixel Per, per second Netflix 4K video stream, how does that look any different than 128 megabits yeah. per second off of a Blu-ray player directly injected to your to yeah. your TV? And really, what it is is about compression, right? Yeah. So, uh, how do you, the best way to explain compression, at least in my eyes, I, I did a I remember doing like a, a work term report on JPEG compression, which is essentially you take a Massive picture. Let's say you take a just like a lossless image and you're like, look, there's a lot of stuff that the human eye can't detect yeah. or can do without and you'd still maintain the feeling of this yeah. image. And what JPEG compression does is it does that stuff. High frequency color changes and all of that stuff and it starts merging that together mm -hmm. in a way that you can't notice. So these algorithms, these compression algorithms are specifically designed to remove information that the human, in this case, the human eye, can't can do without, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so they're very specifically designed for that, based on probably on studies and optical, mm. you know, whatever nonsense. Not nonsense, but because it because it actually works. Because I mm. watch 4K Frontier on Netflix, it looks incredible. Yes, yeah. it looks incredible. But what you'll notice is <clears throat> compression can add. Can, it, it, compression is noticeable. When you have things like confetti on the screen or snow or things where the algorithm just cannot, what it's doing is basically saying, hey, do I need to update this pixel yeah. or can I just keep it the same yeah. as it was before? Right. Yeah. Right. And if you're keep, if there's a lot of uh, disparate things happening on the screen, there's a lot of change that should be happening on the screen and the compression is not going to change all of the pixels. Right. Right. So you're going to start seeing that. So compression artifacts are things like we call it. We, we were talking about banding before, but I think yeah. we use the same word for a lot of things. Compression yeah. artifacts can be um, like streaking where something doesn't change. Like yeah. something whips by a screen and like it's kind of got this shadow. Is that ghosting? Is yeah, that ghosting. ghosting so, that might be the right word for yeah. it. So it can turn up in ways that you uh, that are very noticeable and I've, yeah. I've noticed them before. So that's video compression in, in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, somebody could probably do a better explanation than that's I good. can. It's good enough. But... Uh, but yeah, so so that's really what we're talking about yeah. is the 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 resolution is the same, number of pixels are the same, bit rate is different, yeah. right? And then on the audio side of things, it's exactly the same thing except we're dealing with different types of compression, right? right? Yeah. So there'll be digital plus on Netflix is what gets streamed to your uh, receiver for five point one mm -hmm. uh, audio, whereas on a four K UHD you get a Dolby Atmos mm -hmm. or a DTSX that are uncompressed. Yeah, audio. lossless audio. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of a review of quality, right? Yeah. So I'm a nut <laughs> about mm -hmm. that shit. And that's why if there's something that I really like, I always want to see it at the highest quality. Yeah. I'm just, I just can't, you can't help myself. Right. Um, so, so I, I think that we've talked about quality before. You're, you're not buying Blu-ray, so uh, so does that bother you? Do you care? And a lot of people, and, and they just, like, I just want to add that compression algorithms are designed to make you not care because what's tossing away is stuff yeah. that you really, you know, you can live without. Matter, yeah. yeah. So, um, do would, you care? Would I prefer better quality? Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. However, like I said before, the setup I currently have, whether I have really good quality or just average quality coming through Netflix, eh. It doesn't really, I, the cinematic experience right now in my setup, even if it was as perfect as it could be, yeah. it's still not good enough for me to really care that much. Yeah. That's okay. the problem. If I had a better setup, then it would be no question. Mm -hmm. yeah. But given the way circumstances are, it's fine. And realistically, I'm watching the film to really get into the film itself. If I see some compression artifacts, I can live with it, you know, at least right now. If I get a bigger screen, a better setup where the whole room's completely darkened, yeah. get better sound, yeah. they get that whole setup ready for the immersive experience, then we'll talk. But yeah. for now, I can live with it the way it is. 
Fair enough. That's the way I. Enough. That's the way I see it. And obviously, you you care about the quality as well, right? Yeah, for sure. I I, I do as well. And again, uh, in in my situation in particular, because uh, my theater screen is 120 inch, the artifacts are actually a lot more apparent yes. to you, right? Oh, so yeah, it's like it's, it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. different, right? Like yeah. you can watch. Like my old, the TV I had before I bought this new 4K uh, 65 inch one was a 50 inch Sony uh, HD set. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, like watching, uh, you know, streaming something on there versus streaming something on my home theater, totally different ball game. Yeah. Right? Like it's passable on my TV. Yeah. But when I watch it on my theater, blown up at 120 inch, like, yeah, all these artifacts now that were kind of, eh, yeah. now it's like they're right in your face. You can't yeah. ignore them. You can't not see them. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so they actually get more apparent as the size increases, essentially. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's... Uh, and I, do you notice that when, you, when you're watching a Blu-ray disc, like a 1080p Blu-ray disc, do you notice that the artifacts are lessened or are not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, the quality is, uh, it's, it's apparent. But having said that, I will say... That I'm, I am very impressed with the Netflix uh, out, like compression oh, algorithms me too. for 1080p. Like, oh, yeah, me too. it's a, 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 I'll put it this way: it's a lot harder to detect the difference, I would say, in video than it is in the audio. Yeah. Because the audio is just so horrible. Yeah. On Netflix. On Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Like when you're streaming, so it's like you know, I could, I do watch, uh, you know, Netflix stream Netflix movies on my home theater. Mm. It's not terrible. It's good. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Right. But it's not great. Yeah. But the audio is horrible is it like it yeah. is just unbearable it's like muddy i have not noticed that it's flat it's yeah. just trash so it's like i i actually i i prefer the blu-rays more for the audio than for the video interesting i did yeah. not expect that because i i actually i i'm a fan of like you know netflix original series let's say like stranger things hmm. watching it on netflix i can be certain that this is this quality for this show is high enough that i don't need to go out and buy the blu-ray right. i'm actually not I'm not too concerned about that. The audio here, like like same as you, Justin. I got a tenant downstairs, so I'm not listening. And like the what I played for you here, that's higher than I ever watch it. Right. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. it's because you guys are here. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, but typically it's at lower volume, so I'm not. I don't really mm. notice uh, as much. Oh yeah, I'm pounding my. Yeah. yeah. Always <laughs> like... <laughs> and that's the thing. You, at higher volumes, you're gonna hear it. Yeah. Right? I had to remove the shelf that was above my receiver because it was just it was cutting out like that... thermal cutoff. <laughs> it was so like loud. Loud. <laughs> But so usually, like, louder you hear it, bigger screen you see it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and I think that sort of makes sense. You start yeah. seeing the gaps yeah. when you zoom in and when you blow something up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's another that's another reason. Yep. And one thing we haven't touched on before we jump to the next topic was was books. I totally mm -hmm. forgot to mention. Oh yeah. But the same thing is happening to uh, to books to any sort of literature. We got Kindles. We have digital uh, digital books. A lot of people are in two camps. They want to buy books. They love yeah. the feel of a book, the tactile nature of a book versus uh you know a thousand books on your kindle i can't you even fathom the idea of an e-reader like when these <laughs> things were invented i was like what a dumbass <laughs> whoever invented this thing is a complete idiot but, <laughs> but really having funny. said that I, I i own one but i, I never, <laughs> but i don't use it it's, it's like an early like kobo, kobo thing yeah. and uh it's sitting in my basement collecting dust because it's like i don't want to read a book like that yeah so, yeah i mean we read a lot of comics right you read like you're you you you've got a ton of like the transformers idw series you've got yeah i wouldn't say i'm a big collector but, but i have all of the transformers yeah. uh classic ones from the 80s they, yeah. they the sold marvel the, stuff the yeah. paper uh, yeah the marvel stuff they sold yeah. on paperback and the whole idw series the new ones i got those and then right. i have a random box of comics from the eight the 70s with you had size yeah. man thing yeah. <laughs> you have my favorite marvel uh, my favorite cover like oh ever God. Yeah. man the giant size man thing yeah and i just that I was couldn't... the best moment of my life it goes that then maybe my marriage like somewhere <laughs> around there the fact that i you... think i have that next picture is your hand with the book like yeah. yep Oh my god! Because it's, it's an unforgettable me. cover, right? <laughs> it's a, it's a nice it's an unfor like yeah. I, like I haven't. It's not like I've read it. <laughs> it was it was actually even it was written before I was born. I looked yeah. it up. It was like 1976 or 94. Yeah. I don't know why I have it. It's just there. <laughs> but that cover is unforgettable, and oh, it's a, and it's number one. It's issue number, number one. <laughs> it's so good of this theory series, giant size man thing. Like, <laughs> what a great cover. Oh. Um, so if you know. So they have digital comic books, they have digital uh, novels. 
can we say that the quality is worse on a digital let's say let's go with novels first because i think that's an easier Mm -hmm. or that's a more gray area whereas comics is less but uh so a digital novel if you're reading off of a kindle or an e-reader of any kind versus reading the novel physically is there a quality difference like say we're talking about vinyl which is less quantifiable but you guys Mm -hmm. have both said that there's something different we said yeah we said that here for 4k movies there is something quantifiably different and it's noticeable books or uh so yeah books would be would be the next one yeah i mean books like i don't know i mean what is the quality of a book the, yeah like what yeah. are the i mean the the qualities of the book are you know i mean the e-readers are so good now right like yeah you know that you can change the font size to your liking and all this kind of stuff are waterproof now even like, yes yeah, and they are easy on the e-ink stuff is easy on the eyes so it's not the same as saying you know reading on your phone your yeah, eye yeah. Screen, whatever like i think yeah. they've solved all those problems uh, related to quality but i mean for me, it's like, yeah, it's 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 the experience. It's the tactile. It's feeling the paper. It's the smell of the book, mm-hmm. right? They, they all smell different, like depending on how old they are, right? <laughs> I'm just picturing you opening a book and just going... <laughs> 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 Smells like Tolkien's balls. Yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> dude all of my... Every, every have, single copy of Lord of the Rings is like... <sighs> Another work in, work in progress. I well, do he's have, like <laughs> Tolkien tea, tea bagging all of his tea books. Bags he doesn't. He didn't do book signings. He did book tea bagging. <laughs> just lift up a leg. Of, Here you go. It's your copy. I have. So I do I have token. I do have multiple copies of Lord of the Rings, all right. from different eras or different editions. They right. do. The paper ages differently. They yeah, do yeah. smell different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Whether they were tea bagged or not. Um, the other thing is, I would say, uh, in terms of just. Uh, the sense of uh, accomplishment, like how far I've gotten in the book. Yeah, that's right? true. There's a... uh, I can't, I can't get that sense from an e-reader. Like, yeah, maybe you can tell your page number out of whatever, but it doesn't give you the same feeling as like, oh, I got from here to here, or you know, I only have this much left. I'm gonna power through the rest of the book tonight, or whatever. Yeah, right? Like, right. I can kind of think about how many chapters do I want to read, how much do I want to power through in one sitting, or whatever. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's different. Yeah. So it is different. So very specifically is the quality of the book changed like when you if you were to read a book no the quality e-book, of the experience that's changed. What, okay so quality of experience yeah. changes okay so that's actually fundamentally different in a smaller extent to the vinyl because you only heard a slight difference you heard right. more of a difference yeah, yeah. this where we've all noticed differences and there there is a difference no doubt no yeah, right quantifiable no but with books that's where i can for me i can get on board the digital stuff because mm. it doesn't change the um, content, the content, well. like it, it, how I how I experience the content, right. not the actual uh, tactile nature, like the physical mm-hmm. interaction with the book, but how I experience the content it doesn't change the story, uh, or you know whatever's being written about. So mm-hmm. that one I can there's there's less for me to, to grasp, the, to grasp. Other than for all of these things, digital music, digital books, digital movies. What Di- what about for you though when it comes to like graphic novels and comic books? Yeah, and stuff, right. Yeah, then there's actually art. Yes. Rather than just words. So yeah, yeah, I kind of yeah, I uh I there is a difference. Yes. And and I've read, you know, I've read a lot of comics on my on and you have as well on on your on our tablets like I, I read comics on tablets, not the same as reading on uh reading the actual physical book because the uh display is important. The image mm. is important. And mm. when you start talking about the image, like how, you know, how were these books scanned? Like, is mm-hmm. it a high enough resolution? Mm-hmm. Um, zooming in and out of an image is not the same as like holding something I- tangibly in front of your hands. A lot of books come out, and uh, I'm pointing over here, you guys can't see it, but like there are absolute editions for DC stuff that are oversized. Mm-hmm. They're like massive books that have giant pages, which helps tremendously with yeah. the visual yeah. experience. So I would say that there's way more of an argument. If I read something digitally on my tablet and I like it, I will buy it. Yeah. If I read, uh, sorry, uh, a graphic novel, if I mm-hmm. read on my tablet, if I read something on my Kindle and like it, not necessarily. Stays on your Kindle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not necessarily <laughs> buying that book. Yeah, agreed. I'm the same way. Uh, same, uh, I'll just say ditto. Literally everything you just said, ditto. I'll right. read. I'll read books digitally, and yeah. I'm okay with that. I read them on my phone because the li- I, I'm yeah, not a fan rough. of it. I'm not yeah. a fan of it. I'm not condoning it. It's just it's convenient. I'm condoning. I need a new. I need a new because my tablet. I need Don't a new. Uh, I need a new tablet because <laughs> yeah. I need something to link up with Libby, so that way I can actually oh, read yeah. books on my That's tablet right, properly. Yeah. But I don't have that yet. So, mm. but that being said, 
it's coming. Do they have Libby for e-readers and stuff like that? They, you can rent you can rent uh, books, e-books, but whatever uh, device is running the Libby app, I think, is yeah. where you read it. You can no, you can send it to other devices too that I guess have your Libby oh, account okay. set up. Okay. So and I don't think it works with a Kindle. It works with a Kobo. Does it? Oh, or maybe. Oh, maybe if yeah. it works with a Kobo, it. that yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty wild. But, I would just yeah. get an Android tablet and just yeah. do everything there. That'd I love I. If I were to read a digital book, I'd, I'd read it on the Kindle for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's just like, it's just easier easier on the eyes. True. I'm starting mm-hmm. to lose my vision. So it's just better for me to, better for me to read on, on a Kindle. But yeah, so that's kind of like my feeling on the, the graphic novel side mm-hmm. of things. My wife loves books. You can see like this, this shelf is just filled with, with books. And I love the idea of libraries and stuff like that. But again, space is a huge issue. 50 Blu-rays is not the same as 50 books. Right. And the space that we're talking about is really just like, we're talking about like orders of magnitude, like larger, right? Like yeah. double the size, yeah, triple yeah. the size. So space is definitely a premium. Having said that, representation, um, when I walk into somebody's house, something I do look for, if they, like they're usually a hobby, someone usually has an hobby. Um, they have like, you know, they collect vinyl or they, they collect movies or they do both, Mm. you know, like, um, I find like the physical, uh, rack Mm -hmm. or presentation of all of your movies or your books or your music is a way to convey what kind of person you are. Um, looking at a digital rack of the stuff you own just doesn't work. Like, I I feel like you you can't get that feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why I love the physical media. And even if we had that, you know, pie in the sky scenario where you download everything highest of quality available offline, I might still buy physical stuff because I want to be able to, it's, it's a reflection or an extension of myself. Mm -hmm. So be able to do that. So I think you do something similar in your house where you have a lot of the stuff on display. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. My vinyls are on. Yeah. You just wait till they're on the walls. Um, Yeah, exactly. I have my, uh, my Transformers uh, museum with all my IDW and other stuff in there kind of to go along with the yep. display. Uh, I have books. I have a bookshelf in my living room when you walk in there by the yep. chair. Like, <laughs> uh, That's right. There's a, there's a, the, the video DVD Blu-ray library, which you've seen yep. there as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I think it's cool. And sometimes it's, it's just, you know, like you were saying, it, it gives you a, as like, you know, if you're somebody you know, going to somebody else's house, it kind of gives you a window into, okay, who is this yeah. person, right? Yeah, like, always like without that. kind of being like, hey, let's turn on your TV and look at your digital locker. <laughs> right. That'd be weird. Right. 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 That's or you bizarre, just have a projection. Right? There's a TV that's just showing your digital rack all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you uh, basically, you, ha- you talked about the space, Justin. Yeah. You talked about not having that, but you have other stuff oh, yeah. on display. Yeah. Not it's just not movies or music, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so you've exactly. got like what? What else? What do you've got in your house that replaces I've got, that? I've got art. I've got posters. Yeah. Um, mostly like in the main room that we have is not a lot of that. The one thing that I do have is I think it was for the first phase one for Avengers. Uh, they had like the thing that held the briefcase that held the Tesseract. Oh yeah. I yeah, bought yeah. that specifically because each Blu-ray that was part of that series or that mm. set had unique cover art for each one of them yeah that's cool i i loved it so that's why i bought that but like it's mainly in my office that most of the display stuff is on uh, is out there and i've got kind of my own transformers museum i've got all my comic books up there all the blu-ray cases are there like i said propping up my monitor um so that's kind of where the stuff that i like is represented and displayed so if anybody comes over to the house for the first time i always bring them up there just to kind of like show them that they know enough about me at that point to know what kind of stuff I like. Right. So that's kind of where I like to yeah. show them. Right. Like, this is, you know, this the, is, this is the me room. This yeah. is my little man. I think the, the other, uh, you know, maybe less, uh, you know, appreciated part of that, or maybe not as it doesn't happen as often, but like, uh, you know, when people come over, like, let's say you come over, like two of these Blu-rays in this, three of them are, are mine. Yeah. Cause you were like, Oh, can I borrow them? Yeah. And yeah. I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. can borrow them right oh, like people great. come like same thing with my books right yeah. like my my father-in-law came over yesterday i had the the latest book from stephen hawking that i bought a couple months ago and he just picked it up off the shelf he's like oh i'm gonna read this one next and, right and he's he like was, and he left one for me right there was a book that he had that he dropped off at, at my bookshelf he's like you should read this one next right like that interaction can't happen really on a you know on a You're digital right. level, right? Yeah. Now, having said that, like, I don't do this with a lot of people. Like, you know, there's my father-in-law. Yeah. And when it comes to, like, Blu-rays, I, I think you're the only person 
I lend stuff to, you might be the last because you have still not found my copy of The Prestige, right? You motherfucker. <laughs> Look. You can make it up to me by buying me the 4K UHD one, but there you go. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, like that is yeah. that's part of the that's part of it too. And like how we used to do with games, right? Yeah, right. We didn't always have the money to buy all the Nintendo games we wanted, yeah. but yeah. we buy different ones and be like, hey, I'm gonna take this one for a month, and you can have you know whatever. I right? still like, do that. That's yeah. how I played Spider Man. That's how I'm gonna be playing a, another game. Like I, I'll swap games with other friends that buy shit. Yeah, yeah. I t- sorry, I God of War for specifically. To- totally forgot to frame this. We, you know, we're talking about movies and music. We started there, books, but video games is happening with video games yeah, as well. D- digital. Play. Digital only video games that you can't lend to other people yeah. are basically tied to your account. You know, if the service disappears yeah. or if you're like, what would happen if Steam went down? <laughs> that would be bad news. That's what chaos. Be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there'd be a lot of angry people. That's right. right? They, just, like, they just want digital. But uh, so my argument against owning physical games is that games like TV shows just take too long. When I, I don't replay video games. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't rewatch TV series. So playing it once on like installing a you know a, a digital game, done with it, uninstall it, it's gone. It's to me it's gone because I'm never going back to play it. Now there's a whole bunch of reasons why. But there but different. there's certain games that fall into that category, and then there's other ones that don't. Right? Like yeah. if you can play more open ended games, like say <laughs> Civ Civ Six or yeah. Starcraft or whatever, and you can still go back and revisit those because. I may have finished the campaign, but it doesn't mean that I'm completely done with the game. Oh yeah, like I may want to revisit those. So would yeah, you buy I physical? There's... Would you buy a physical? Version? I do. I do. I used to buy them, but they stopped selling them. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are talking about this thing, this very subject. You can't go into EB Games anymore and buy buy a PC know, game. PC right? games. They so. don't. Do they not sell PC physical PC games? They do at not all? anymore. They used to have a rack of used ones. They never sold. They haven't sold new ones for, I feel like, a decade. I don't know how long it's been. Yeah. But they always used to have used ones where people would bring them in and they'd resell those or whatever. Um, but I don't even think they have that now. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, I basically buy digital games on sale. Like, I don't... Yeah. I don't StarCraft buy, like, 2 is the last one. Um, StarCraft 2. Yeah, the last... Phys- like the, 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 there was a couple of versions, right? I think sure. the last physical game I got was either Injustice 2 or The Witch. It was probably Injustice 2 is the last game that I bought physical. Mm. Did you... like? Do you, have you bought... A, uh, Injustice 2, you bought physical as well, Injustice right? 2, I bought physical. I can't remember. I feel like there was another one. Um, Uncharted, maybe, after that? Mm. I, I, I can't remember. Um, I mean, I like having the physical games because... I like being able to lend them back and forth. Like I said, me and my brother and all of our friends, we toss games back and forth like crazy. Um, we haven't even talked about lending movies. Well, yeah, that's right. Like, I mean, yeah, we're, we're like, basically talking about it now. It's the same. Yeah, concept, yeah. Right? Like lending is actually uh, a, ge- a generic, a generic uh, digital issue, right? I mean, like we mm-hmm. can't lend a, vi- a no, digital video. You can't game. lend a video game. You can't lend, can't a, lend a digital. Can you like? If you, you can lend your. It? You can lend your brother your Netflix password. Yeah. That yeah, I've done. Which, I, which I've done for a little while. That guy <laughs> mooched off of me for the longest time. I've had it. I'm it. I've had it. I changed the password. The message was like, hey man, I can't get into Netflix. I'm like, you're goddamn right you can't. There's, I've got people on my Netflix. I can't tell you the amount of rage that goes through my body <laughs> yeah. when, I lie in a, when, I, when I log in and it goes, yeah. too many people are using yeah, the thing. I'm like, yeah. I just... Because I, I can't even like kick everybody out. I wish there was a universal <laughs> kick button and I could just boot the fucking people yeah. off. I, yeah, I went, yeah. I mean, that happened to me and I went totally nuclear. Like, I had a complete <laughs> fucking meltdown. <laughs> Chuck was like, You need to calm down. I'm like, I will not calm down. <laughs> Like freaking yeah, out. And it's like you're trying to message them to get off, but they're not looking at their phone. Obviously, they're watching a the movie. <laughs> uh, or it's worse when you see that they've read the message and just don't respond. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so lending. Uh, do you guys know if you buy a direct um, a movie off of Google Play, a, uh, uh, a movie off of Google Play, can you lend it? Can you can I don't you do anything with that? So. I've okay. never tried, though. But I don't think so. Without, I've never like, actually said, done that. I've never, bought, I've never bought a movie. You know what you do? I, I never know that. Everybody just, like, you get a group of joined friends together, account. just yeah. one account, and everybody just shares the password yeah. for that one account. It's yeah. like the universal movie. Mm-hmm. That's account. true. That's, That's true. There's yeah, ways I mean, to hack it if you really want to, That's but it's true. not the same. I, I, for sure it's not the same. Games, it's even worse. You cannot do anything like that because that's very disruptive to like... <laughs> so he's la- Justin's laughing this is one time because we're, we're logged in on each other. Like, we're all basically like Ajay, you, oh. me, Justin, um, everyone. 
we have our accounts on everyone's yeah. PlayStation, right? Yeah. And everyone's got their credit cards and stuff tied yeah. to that. It's just like a, it's just a <laughs> honor system where you yeah. just don't go in and mess with shit. But I was basically at this point in a in a game called The Shadow of Mordor, <laughs> where I'm fighting this guy. I've been working. I've been. It's like a twenty minute fight. I've been fighting this guy, running, fighting him, running, fighting him. This general, this Urukai general in this game, yeah. and uh, and suddenly. Like, I'm getting attacked, and we're doing this thing. Suddenly, the screen just goes blank. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And it's like, you've been logged out of this account and logged into another PlayStation. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm trying to think, like, who's got my PlayStation credentials? And I know these guys all went out. Like, yeah. you and Sunil and Sanjay and Justin had all gone out. And it was like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Those drunk assholes are back. <laughs> Someone booted up the PlayStation. And I messaged him, I'm like, yo, did you just log into my account? Yeah. <laughs> and basically, I got I got really upset because oh, the yeah. game is still, like, I don't know what's going on with the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they all just sent me a bunch of middle fingers. So, yeah, we were, yeah, we basically logged into his account because I hadn't bought Jackbox yet. And yeah, he did, so I fucking did that. <laughs> oh, did you lose all your progress on that fight? Uh, it froze. It Good. froze in Good. time, and I came back, and it was just it just continued. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, that's but, disappointing. But uh, but anyway, I was um, hoping you'd have to restart the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't lend games. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you can't really lend digital movies and you uh, digital books, depending on you know how you get them. And same with the movies, I suppose, and the games. Like yeah. you can pirate them, but you can give them out that way. But yeah. lending is a big deal. Like that culture is still alive and well. People yeah. want to be able to buy something, own it, and be like, when I'm done with this. I can give it to someone that I care about and be like, "Hey, yeah. you should try this." Yeah. Right. So and that's then a, lose it and, and have to buy the person the prestige on UHD. Yeah, <laughs> in an upgraded, <laughs> upgraded resolution. That's that's, that's the interest. interest. <laughs> yeah, that's interest. What is that? That's about three thousand pixels of interest. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. Um, yeah. So uh, the last sort of section of this, I wanted to talk about what happens when these things disappear. Like, what happens when physical media, when everyone does what Samsung did, they're not producing, uh, they're not producing players anymore. Everyone did, like, the PC gaming industry is already done, gone fully digital. Artists don't, don't really CDs anymore, two thirds of that, that, that market. What, what is this, what does this look like for us? Um, I mean, I have some thoughts, but do do you guys have any, uh, anything you want to jump in with? Um, I think it's going to go the way of music really yeah i mean being able to stream stuff is important um you know it's convenient Mm -hmm. you can do it from anywhere typically um you don't have those limitations with music right now where you go somewhere and it's like you can't stream that at least i haven't seen it you can't stream that in this country right uh yeah i mean i offline most of our stuff when i'm traveling Mm -hmm. right right not talking about offline you're talking about like yeah like because i've never tried i I, I mean i'm sorry i have tried everywhere i've tried has worked yeah exactly that's what i'm saying but then on top of that you should have a way to be able to watch this stuff without needing an internet connection and i mean netflix already has being able to download those movies to your device as well yeah you can offline yeah yeah i mean that's i i watched the entire series of evil dead the season three on the plane on the way back from uh from ukraine Oh, nice. Yeah, so that that took up you know a few hours of my flight, which was great. Yeah. Uh, so some of that's there. Um, it needs to get better, and I think that'll only get better as well as the hardware continues to get better when devices have more storage capacity and stuff. You can offline way more stuff. So I think it'll get better, uh, and that capability will be there. But uh, so you're you're, uh, some, you're you're saying physical media is gone. You're saying access is the most important thing. Right? Access and quality for sure. I right. mean, I but the thing is, is if they cut off the quality as to what it is now, I don't think mm-hmm. I think that there's going to be a need for some sort of replacement for that quality. Yeah. I mean, that's why vinyls made such a resurgence is because people are saying that while well, vinyl was a better quality, I'm not saying it's like vastly better. It's marginal. Um, but unless you have like a crazy setup like like they they had at uh, the place you listen. So, yeah, I mean, I think all of the things we've discussed so far saying those are the short sites, well, that needs to be in the digital space. And if they're not, then there's a market for that high quality stuff in some other means of capacity. And what that is, who knows? That might be still digital. I don't know if you guys remember when the UHD standard first came out uh, and, you know, Sony, everybody started making 4K TVs. Sony's first 4K player was actually, it was before the UHD standard came out, like the disc. Yeah. And, and it was uh, it was hard drive. 
And basically what they intended was that you would basically buy a movie and download it to the box. Oh, right, interesting. Right, on the yeah. hard drive. Now, I don't know if that, I think that, like I said, that was early days. I don't think that eventually took off. And thankfully, people came together with more common sense and yeah. created the UHD standard. Right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, as storage uh, gets cheaper and grows, like I can see that uh, that world maybe... Uh, you know, coming to that world, the I, hard drive, the hard drive, the pulling down of file. Like the, you said, Interstellar was like that one file yeah, for Interstellar, yeah, yeah. but like the highest available quality, for example, just so that you're not dependent on the internet connection or yep. uh, the account sharing issues, right? Yeah, yeah but what do you like, do with that file? They're not going to let you just give that file. To no, anybody. the lending part is still. I think the whole yeah. infrastructure for lending, it's yeah. not there. Yeah. To change your name on the PlayStation Network, it's yeah. like a. Can they just introduce that but mm. now? And then if you want to change it a second time, you have to pay. Oh my god! Like this infrastructure. They have it's like so... monkeys there writing sequel queries. Yeah. 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 It's not like what's the deal? It's it's so ingrained. The whole idea of sharing is counterintuitive. It's what they wanted to get rid of yeah. at, the, mm. at the beginning mm. because copying and pirating is so rampant. Right. Yeah. That lending some there's there's no there's no difference when you're looking at something lending something to someone and copying it is almost the same thing absolutely so all of that security can't discern between the two it's all fuzzy right yeah so yeah. it's like that's what i'm afraid of i'm afraid that when we do this there's no lending and it's like i've got that i can give that to you yeah right yeah, yeah. um but I like you that's, said that's counter like why would they want you to have that? to lend yeah yeah because right now like when i was talking about the the me and my Friends that we share the games. Yeah. You know, three games I could think of were Uncharted, uh, Injustice, and God of War. Yeah. All three of us, the three guys that own those separate copies, we would have all bought three three copies each. Instead, exactly. they only got, they got three times less what they could have earned on those. That's so true. it makes sense that they From want to prevent standpoint. that. Yeah. Um, they want to prevent, yeah, they want to prevent, prevent that. lending. You know, like, does, doesn't that seem ridiculous to you? If I was, if I'm playing devil's advocate, no, you should be buying your own individual copy. I'm, yeah. If I'm playing devil's advocate, it sucks on our behalf. I don't even think, yeah. I don't think there's any corporation that can go to that point and say that. It's like furniture. Like, if you're buying anything physical, people are always going to be like, you have to own your own thing. Hand-me-downs and secondary markets are something that have existed for so long. But they just don't support it in the yeah, space. And, and, I, and I think it's, to be honest, I think it's a bit short-sighted, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, at, at, the, at the surface, you can say, yeah, okay, you know, we're not going to meet our fiscals for this year end if we if Justin and all of his brothers don't buy this game, right? Like, right. Uh, yeah. You know, so we need to m make these goofs buy as many as we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. right. But there's something to be said for you know, like for example, I don't know, like you guys watched that scene in First Man. Maybe you're more likely to watch that movie now, right? Maybe than you would have been. Like both of you said beforehand, you had no intention of watching it, right? right. Maybe that scene changed your mind. Maybe you'll sit down and watch that movie. Maybe you'll fall in love with that movie, yeah. and maybe you'll buy it. Maybe yeah. you won't, right? right? Maybe you'll just be like, "Oh, hey, can I borrow it from you and then watch it?" Yeah. But, but you never know, right? Like there, there, that it's not unprecedented. Like there, you know, even in the in the in the video game era, the Nintendo mm -hmm. era, like there were some games that were just so good, everybody had their own copy, oh, yeah. right? Because yeah, it was just yeah, like yeah. I can't be limited to you know when so and so is going to lend it to me because yeah. I just have to have it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. So I mean, I think it's very short sighted to to take so, that approach. Yeah. yeah. To be quite honest, it's what like word of mouth, right? Like, even the, in this age of social media and everything, and you know, things trend and retweet, mm -hmm. and I don't know what, there's still something to be said for that underground current of word of mouth of, of how things spread, right? That's true, that's true, that definitely exists. Mm -hmm. The um, so le we can all agree that lending is a, it's a massive gap, yeah, right now, yeah. yeah. Um, and if it's not resolved, I don't think. Like the concept of ownership can shift entirely to digital. Until that's resolved, I don't think that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can force everyone to buy their own copy when they've been able to lend stuff their entire lives. Mm -hmm. um, wh one of the other things uh, that I was going to mention was I should have mentioned in the last section that just came to me now was special features. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Movies, and I totally yeah. sorry, and deal, I totally yeah. uh, totally glossed over that earlier. Uh, special features are the reason that I got into DVDs to begin with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I bought the Matrix, which was my first deal, so VHS had none of these. And sometimes right. they have an EPK at the end or like a little thing on the VHS. 
but never to the extent that the mummy, like Steve, uh, Stephen Sommers is the mummy, uh, the Wachowskis, like uh, the Mat- Matrix. Blade came out. Mm. Blade is one of the best collector's editions DVDs that I own. Yeah. Director's commentary, spent making of Robert Rodriguez's movies were basically like filmmaking 101 mm. on a DVD. Desperado or Once Upon a Time in Mexico or or El Mariachi or whatever. All of his yeah. movies, he always had these crazy special f- features. And that was the biggest reason. When I watched, when I'm like, I saw a movie, I like it. What makes me want to buy it is their director's commentary. I basically buy the movie. Yeah. I'm like, because I will listen to that. I'll be like, yeah. I'll be doing something else and just listen to the director's going to watch it. And like, and you learn yeah. so much. The Carpenter, Kurt Russell commentaries are legendary. Yes. They're so yeah. good. Um, deleted scenes too. Deleted That's scenes. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Deleted scenes. But here's, so here's, here's kind of where I wait, where I weigh these two. Do digital buys include special features? I guess is the first question, which I don't know if we actually have the answer to yeah. that. I don't know if you yeah. guys have I, No, they don't. At least the no, ones that I've bought, they yeah. typically don't. And in those movies, they do have special features on the, yes. on the release? Yeah. On the physical For release? instance, like any of these ones here, right? Like mm. Halloween, for instance, it comes with a digital download. Yeah. But you're not getting any of the special features with no. it. You're just getting the movie. No. You but, don't get any of the special commentary either. Yeah. There's no like additional audio tracks or anything you can change? I don't know. Yeah. Not that I've seen, no. Yeah. So... So that would be a massive, massive gap. 100%. Massive. They'd have to start releasing these not as files. It's actually a package. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. a it's like a small package that yeah. you're getting for the movie. So that's that's one thing. Um, and uh, that's uh, that drives a lot of my purchases here. And uh, But I would net- think that's an easy gap to fill. If they are really going towards digital... Then they have those that files. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can imagine that, being that they, said, they build those packages. Right. You know? And that being said, that's why that's another reason why I did buy Blu-rays when I did as much. And anytime I'm looking at Blu-rays now, I always look for what special features are there every time. That's because the first that's thing almost I look at. especially if I've already seen the film, that's almost more imp- important to me if I'm buying that right. than the film itself. I agree. Because yeah, yeah. I like the film, I know that, but what other cool stuff is coming with it? What's that yeah. stuff to sweeten the pot? Yeah, no, yeah. I absolutely agree. It's more important. Yes. Almost in my opinion. Uh, other than jumping Maybe, to a 4K yeah. release. Yeah, and, and the cuts too, right? So like Blade Runner, yeah. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I have the UHD for those. There's multiple cuts. Yeah. yeah. Director's cuts, theatrical cuts. Uh, Blade Runner had the final cut. And <laughs> yeah. the final, final cut, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Trace, bust up, bust up. <laughs> yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah so there, there are tons of, like, so we recognize that there are special features on these DVDs that we want, so they would have to be out there. Yes. They would have to be yeah. available digitally. Um, and, uh, the package that we end up getting for that digital thing, is going to be, like I said, it's going to have like, you mount it or, so the other thing was a lot of these deleted scenes, they're released on YouTube now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of these special features are actually released on YouTube. There's a lot that you could get. Like I saw a documentary for the thing, which is the only reason I bought one of the collectors and just DVDs. Mm. I bought that DVD when DVD was, I mean, I'd been on Blu-ray for years, Mm -hmm. but the thing hadn't come out on Blu-ray yet. And I wanted that making up documentary. The only way to get it was it a giant size man thing. Was it (laughs) (laughs) just a regular size? It was a, it's a regular size man thing, uh, average average size average size man thing. Yeah, um, and I had to buy the DVD to get it. Yeah. There was it wasn't available anywhere else. Right. But a lot of that those special features do get released on YouTube, and I don't know how many of them do. I never went through the exercise of saying, okay, there's a couple of documentaries on The Revenant. Like, is that on YouTube? Mm-hmm. You know, like, or w- is that how they might release it? And are they there legally, or are they just yeah. some buddy that ripped the Blu-ray and Ex- just stuck exactly. it Exactly, and they could disappear. They could right. disappear. They could, they, could, yeah. they could not be... Director's commentary, right? Mm-hmm. Like, all of that stuff. So, so there is sort of an answer for that right now, like, with the sort of third-party YouTube stuff. Yeah. But really... It doesn't exist right now, no. at least as far as I know. And then you'd have to know to go looking for it too, right? Like you'd have, you're spending time searching and maybe... Yeah. You know, like, yeah. It's annoying, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the, you, the one thing I'd just like to tack on here, but maybe this is going a little bit uh, into the next segment, which is the future stuff. Yeah. The one thing I think that, you know, while we're talking about this digital, you know, how are, are we going to move to just only digital buying or mm. whatever down? The one thing I think, you know, that if it was going to go to that, uh, you know, where where we're in the, where we're in this world without the physical media, and 
aside from the you know stuff that you were talking about that would be missing that's missing today right the other thing the one thing that would entice me would be if the ownership like let's say i were to buy the movie digitally but the ownership included all future releases and resolutions Ooh. so for example interesting 1080p i could buy the movie digitally right but hey, when it comes out in 4K, you can watch it in 4K too. Or when, it, when we release 8K, yeah. you can still watch it in 8K because you own the license. Perpetual, Perpetual license. license. So to then, content. To content. Like, it's like this thing, yeah. I can keep getting new versions of it. Right. That's pretty wild. That to me, I think would, I'd be like, okay, that's now we're talking, right? Yeah, like you're yeah. talking my language. Maybe we can work something out here yeah. and be friends. Yeah. Right? But right now we're kind of not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but then playing, obviously playing devil's advocate there, what's in it for them? I mean, that's why you get a thousand different releases. I know. So, they they love yeah. to double dip and do all that yeah. stuff. But I'm just saying, like, me personally, I don't know if any oh, of the studios amazing. are listening. But yeah. it's like, hey, that's something I would actually consider paying for a digital right. copy. Because it's like, I know, at least down the road, I can access it in its newest and best format. Right? Yeah, I guess what you're saying is, this is what it would take for me to go yeah. all digital. Yeah. Like, that's really what we're talking about there. Yeah, right, right. right. Um, so in the in the future when this when this stuff has gone the way I think that this is gonna play out I feel like we made the vinyl comparison already I think UHDs and physical media for movies are going to go the way of vinyl companies like Shout Factory like yeah. Criterion like those are companies that are producing excellent special editions mm -hmm. of some of them are obscure like horror right. films and uh, Shout Factory did the Transformers 80s collector's edition with new retrospective documentaries yeah. and special features. Really good. Criteri that was the best part. Yeah. Yep. Criterion and version. In, and both in uh, full frame and the theatrical widescreen. Exactly. Yes, this is like a really like an enthusiast yeah. release. Yeah. Um, the Rock Criterion uh, collection of The Rock, they don't sell it anymore. They don't sell... They There is... There is no... Uh, they go out of print. Yeah. No. You can't get that anymore. Which blows my mind. Which got me, like, thinking about the stuff that I've always wanted to buy but I don't own. You know? And I made this massive Blu-ray list on Amazon because I'm like, shit. What yeah. if Shout Factory stops making these? Like, how long can a company like that produce obscure yeah. special editions for movies that like, like Lake Placid. I love Lake Placid. And they produce this collector's edition of Lake Placid and that blows my mind. Why haven't I bought it yet? Yeah. I should have bought it. it. Because what happens when it goes out of print, it, it just stops existing, yeah. right? That's why I do so much dumpster diving at Walmart, right? Yeah. You never know what you're going to find there in that Blu-ray. That's, that's right. Like, oh, I used to do great. that. I, I <laughs> bought this DVD for Abominable, which is that like uh, that killer Bigfoot movie. Yeah. And I loved it so much, but there it was in a dumpster dive on the sh on 14th Street in New York. I was like yeah. passing by. This guy's always selling DVDs, and it was six bucks. Yeah. I'm like, this is great, and it has a director's commentary and everything on it. Yeah. I was so happy when I got it. But uh, but this stuff doesn't stay in print forever. Yeah. Like and uh, and like the original release for T two, the special edition with the metal cover, doesn't exist anymore. You can't get that. There's like eighteen thousand editions of Terminator two as well. Yeah. Uh, out there. So um, so yeah, like you just can't get them. So um, and I feel like vinyl has a similar collector's mindset. Mm -hmm. Uh. So now, in the future, the way I see it is people are going to be streaming most of their stuff. They're going to be buying digital stuff. But you'll get companies like, hopefully, like Shout Factory and Criterion that are releasing, like, uh, really robust special yeah. editions. But for a very select number of yeah. films. Yeah. The way there isn't a vinyl for everything, or even if there is, there isn't. It's made by some, like, third party in someone's yeah. basement somewhere, right. you know, yeah. like. I feel like that's where we're going to end up with this. Yeah, I think it's going to become a niche product i mean yeah. i think it, you could probably say it's already niche but yeah um, that's true i think it'll become even more maybe like laser disc niche i don't know <laughs> that's 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 like what's the difference between niche and like non-existent yeah. <laughs> it's like a very <laughs> blurred line well yeah or, or yeah yeah like i mean you're I, I think even today on amazon like when you're looking for some movies you're essentially relying on the secondary market like they're yeah. out of print right. you're buying it from third party like you know sellers book, bookstores yeah. video stores whatever yeah. in the u.s that have these and you know they're shipping them out already. yeah you know what i mean like yeah so i think it's you know it's already uh pretty niche um i think that uh yeah i think maybe we'll see more of these companies like uh like oh, Shout Factory so. or whoever yeah. you know start doing this stuff the, the thing that's good about them is uh you know especially even with the transformer stuff and i'm sure they do it with all the other ones is 
when you know when they go back to the to the actual film or the masters and you know they've rescanned everything yeah it's top notch right so it's i mean i i worry that we'll never see a, an 8k physical media standard but i i'm confident that 4k at least will continue to exist for you know the foreseeable future yep. and and yeah maybe we'll get to the day where the streaming is very you know popular or not so much but hopefully there's other uh, companies that you know pick up that torch right that's right yeah and now the, the your collection of, of movies is going to reflect you similarly to your collection of uh, vinyl mm-hmm. you know like it's going to be like this really niche thing it's like oh you collect it's like it oh, already you collect blu-rays it already like, is oh, pretty that's... niche though right like I if you look at my collection for the most part it's mostly sci-fi stuff yeah there's other stuff in there yeah but... But I mean, essentially anything that's like, you know, that's why I bought First Man, right? Because I'm just like, yo, I'm all about the sci-fi yeah. and I'm buying this stuff because it's like somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? If I need it to continue, right? somebody's got to do it. So oh, that's true so, pioneer. That's yeah. so funny. You're a hero, man. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. So funny. But yeah, like, uh, so yeah, like vinyl, like niche. And I think that's where it, that's where it'll be. And I just hope that, you know, the digital stuff takes into account special features, takes into account lending stuff. Do you, you, know, do you like, think, do you think rather than trying to come up with a way like for these streaming services to incorporate special features and stuff in their packages, we may just see the disappearance of that altogether? Oh my God. Like what if, they're, what if they just so... don't bother? Like well, why, why am I going to go track all these guys down, interview everybody, ensemble, get them together in a studio to record something? Ah, forget it. Can't happen. It just, <laughs> it's. There's a, there's a standard that's been set and there are people that want to see it. There are enough yeah. pe- the people that want to see it are typically the people that are buying this stuff. And it still makes up a Right, but I'm saying if but if, if this starts going away and nobody's producing these anymore. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is what incentives do studios have to even continue producing that secondary content, right? I don't know. I don't know. That would be a sad day. Yeah, that would be That know, would be tragic. a sad. That would be a sad day. That that would if if let's say special features were to be killed altogether. That would be a day where I could see myself going more digital with yeah. my content because, man, that's that is that is the, the one of the the, the it, we just talked about it. it could be even more important than the movie. I, I for I argue it is for when I'm buying a movie because I know I I know I've already seen the movie typically. Yeah, and if I haven't, then I get to see the movie. But the stuff I'm going to come back to is not the movie. Right. I'm going to want to see that other stuff yeah. to get a new experience and another layer on top. And then when I watch the movie again, it's that much more special. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That would be very unfortunate if they got rid of that. Um, I don't know. I, yeah. I that would know. be, that would be, yeah, that would be, that would be awful. <laughs> but, uh, but I think there are some things that we're talking about here where you could convert like big movie collectors like myself or mm-hmm. like you, Ajay, like, um, and uh, where I just I really do hope that these companies pick up the slack. I think they're going to start popping up like yeah. these niche companies. The same way I don't know who's making vinyls right now. Like I don't know who's doing it, but somebody's doing it. And it happened way after the fact. I feel yeah. like that it picked up well after you know vinyl like you know the vinyl had disappeared as a yeah. format. Mm-hmm. So I think that as long as as long as there are companies, oh, sorry, as long as there are there is content. That people want to consume, like these special features and these like high quality rescans and retrospective documentaries and stuff. These companies will continue to produce those. That's my, yeah. That's just my take. But it won't be everything. Mm. A new movie, blockbuster movie comes out, maybe that gets a physical release. But other movies, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. Not everything's going to get. Well, like I said, there's release. only six hundred titles to date. I mean, it's growing, but yeah. not everything gets that. 4K release, right? Like Disney for a while wasn't didn't follow that standard. They weren't releasing anything yeah. in UHD. They were just like, ah, we don't want to. That's crazy. And I was yeah. mad. Like I was really upset. I, I stopped buying any Disney movies yeah. after that because I was like, if you're not going to release it in UHD, you're not getting my money. That's right. Oh. right. Yeah. What so, do you think the motivation was behind that? I'm trying to think of like why. I think because, well, maybe because they already in their mind, they or heard had already planned to launch their own streaming service, right? Maybe at that time it wasn't public. Yeah. But maybe they were just like, ah, forget this physical media shit. We don't, we actually, it's in our interest to kill it off, right? We don't, yeah. we don't care about it. Right. We want to go through. They were trying to kill off the 4K standard yeah. and let it, yeah. yeah, I can see that. You made a funny point the last time we were talking about this was, okay, if I go totally uh, subscription-based and I'm not buying any physical media anymore, but all my content spread around everywhere, I got the... 
got the the Disney, the Netflix, the, yeah. you know, the Warner Brothers, DC, all that access, or what is it called? Uh, DC Universe, right. DC whatever. Direct. Yeah, DC yeah. Direct. Um, and Voodoo and Hulu and all of it. Yeah. If you subscribe to all the stuff where all of your, all of the content that you want to see, which yeah. is typically not on a single service, if you subscribe to all of them, you were like, that costs about as much as cable. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now we're basically paying cable prices again. Yeah. Which are obnoxious now. Yeah. Know? Like, what is it, like $90, $100 for like cable, for like yeah, HD I mean, cable or whatever. Yeah. So whatever it's, now you're paying a ton of a, a ton of money to get access to your content and now money is becoming an issue right like yeah. now it costs so yeah. um yeah i it's agree interesting... it's 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 funny because i think you know things are just in general are, are sort of cyclical yeah right? and that's I right think now we're seeing we're getting to that point where it's it's just the, that streaming market is now so saturated it's become so fragmented everybody i mean at the end of the day everybody realizes content is king yeah. And that's what that's what Disney realized, right? That's what all these people realized. It's like, hey, the content is what brings the people, the subscribers. They're like, I'm going to take control yeah, of, of my, my content. content. I'm not going to yeah. let other people distribute it. But then, yeah, then you get into this situation where it's like, well, I can't subscribe to all you guys. So yeah. maybe I'll just go with none of you and go back to buying these. <laughs> that's an option, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the streaming services, they might, because everything is so fragmented, you might start seeing like sign up fees and shit like that. Like you go to a gym or something like that, yeah. right? Initiation. Initiation fees. That's what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that way they, it discourages uh, you yeah. from like doing Popping, a few months yeah. on Netflix and being like, ah, I'm going to go over here, which yeah. I, I have friends that are doing. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, it makes sense. Well, I have to consider that now. You have to. Absolutely. Because you know, the funny thing is I, I didn't, I never had a smart TV before I bought this LG one. So I never realized actually that my Amazon Prime subscription actually comes with Amazon Prime Video. I it never I realized that me, right? last year. Yeah. <laughs> when, um, so it was like so I, I signed up on the TV and I was like, oh okay, well they have a whole new world of stuff here. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I should just cancel Netflix now, right? Why am yeah. I like, paying for but, both? Yeah, yeah, it seems stupid now, right? So I don't know. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, it would be that would be neat, like to see all of them just crumble and then physical media make a return it would just be. <laughs> The icing like, on my cake. Like the phoenix yeah. <laughs> rising <laughs> from the ashes. Yeah, that would be great, man. What a know. great day. I feel like to see this, like, we'll, we'll record this again in 10 years and then we'll... Talk, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how, like, here, It's going to be from, like, streaming to, like, just directly embedding it into your brain. So <laughs> yeah, that would just be like, like oh, okay, I'm watching it. this now. <laughs> that's where it's going to be a time now. I don't fucking... Oh, that's funny. I think uh, I think I pretty much hit all the points that I that I've wanted to hit. Um, do you guys have any anything that that you wanted to mention that we haven't that we haven't talked about yet? No, I think we think. covered most of it. Um, are Are we all in agreement that we think that this will be the last optical or physical media standard four K UHD? I, I think so. Well, well, see, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know because I mean, they have eight K TVs now. I was gonna say yeah. I saw one in Dubai. <laughs> it's no, they, just an eight K TV. No, they have eight K TVs. Yeah, but my concern is that unless, uh, like in Canada, like the ISPs in Canada are ridiculous. Like yeah. they're just yes. choking each other out yeah. the entire time, charging an arm and a leg for for data and bandwidth. There's only so much the mm -hmm. infrastructure can handle. Eight K. Dolby Vision, like whatever, like the next yeah. thing is going to be. Can I guarantee I can get the highest quality AK stream? The content is growing, f like in step with our infrastructure. I suppose if we're mm -hmm. if we're being generous, yeah, I would say. And and I can't even say that because it's not catching up to physical media now. It's yeah. not there now. No streaming, you can't stream what I can get from this revenant, this bit rate I can yeah. get from the Re revenant 4K. Right. Yeah. You jump to 8K and add a whole bunch of other like spinning rims on this thing, and then yeah. they won't be able to handle. They still won't be able to right. handle it. Yeah. So yeah. this will still be. The, it, there could be an optical. Or maybe it's not even optical. Maybe they start selling you like SD flash cards. cards. Flash yeah. drives. Or they start selling you SD cards. You know, like the Nintendo Switch. All yeah. of the games are on little SD cards. Yeah. Which. Then yeah, you don't even need a sense. case. It's going to be this little. Yeah, thing. it's going to be like you're going to go through a little rack. Can I share that? Yeah, here I've got. Yeah. Uh, here, I've got you can take all my... sixty of my games. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But they'll start selling you SD cards, 128 gig SD cards, or 256 yeah, gig, 256, yeah. 256 gig SD cards with you know the 8K version of the Revenant. I, yeah. Right, 8K is just too preemptive right now. I feel like we haven't even started walking fully with 
4K yet before we're starting to run. You know oh, I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, I think 8K Like, 4K, just to give you an idea of penetration, 20% of homes now have 4K TVs. That's actually a lot. As of the end of 2018. And mainly, I just wanted to say the word penetration. Penetration. <laughs> I know. I was looking for a joke in my head for that, and then you went already for the joke, so I was like, that's really why I threw this down. Okay, Ajay penetrated my joke. Um, uh, that's actually that's actually more than I thought than I thought it would be, but... But yeah, like I think AK, they're just displaying that. That's yeah. like you know, that's like. Um, Plus, it was in Dubai. Concept yeah, cards like flossing in yeah. Dubai. Is yeah, that's right. Like breathing. Um. So so, but but I, what I'm saying is, I guess when we get to AK, there's still going to be this deficit between like local physical media, whether it's a disc or an SD card or whatever, and uh, and streaming. Mm-hmm. And I think that's only going to get because they're not going to stop with the Ks. You know, they're not going to stop yeah. with the pixels and the data and. And then, but what about then? It's going to turn into VR like yeah. experiences, and I think Which this whole thing is going to change. Yeah, this whole thing is going to change, and like we're not going to be looking at screens anymore. Yeah, we're just we're going to be looking at we're going to be wearing helmets. <laughs> So I hope they're comfortable and air conditioned. Is all yeah, I can say. Dude, yeah, when I wear that thing, I get sweaty in the ears. It's just, it's not. I pretty. just hope they have a hole so I could put a straw and drink something. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> space for it to shove popcorn in my mouth. Yeah, um, that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, that's probably a conversation for another day. But uh, but yeah, SD cards, man. That's probably where it's going if it's going to continue. Things, dude, like you said, keep getting smaller. So yeah, I can see that yeah. happening at some point. And I'd love it if they went with the SD cards. We're talking about ideal stuff. They went with the SD card, but they started selling vinyl-sized packaging. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like I got this Mon- like this Mondo stuff, art yeah. book here. Like this, art, the art, like the poster art and the Mondo art book is amazing. If yeah. I got a vinyl with like Mondo art for my like you know Shout Factory or even Mondo, we might even start releasing like movies rather than just vinyl. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the pack, like we just talked about the package is important. It's yeah. display value is important. Right. But you open it up. It's a fucking little <laughs> SD card in there or fucking nothing. <laughs> it's a slip with a digital yeah. code, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I'd love, I'd, I'd love for that, for that packaging to get bigger and more or- ornate. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's a, it was a good point. Anything else guys? No, no, I don't think so. You got anything? Oh, that's cool. about it. Well, I'd like to thank you, Ajay, for joining us this time around. We should have you uh, have you on again when we talk about something else that's more technical. We should have you. We should have you on. Uh, we can do like a blind vinyl test. I'm still waiting for it. the Transformers one. Oh yeah, the, that the, happen, yeah, man. that's right. That one will be heavily fueled by alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking sure. what we should do actually for that. What we should do is uh, do uh, like a watch with us. Like we'll watch Transformers the movie. Oh, we'll just and then you'll have ourselves. like a commentary. Yeah. Or, yeah can just, you, or can you bring your guitar and just play some of the songs while we sing along? <laughs> yeah. Campfire. Yeah. Campfire sing along. Dude, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like we should just get completely loaded and watch Transformers, uh, which is basically just when we're like, "Hey, you want to watch Transformers?" Yeah. Basically <laughs> so like a doing. Wednesday night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. And Every we'll fifth just time you come over to my house. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, I think we're gonna wrap it up. This is Atul. Justin. Ajay. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Thanks for watching or listening. And check out Tiku Talk. Tiku yep. Talk. Tiku Talk. Talk. Com. Cool. For the latest in reggae music news and reviews. Yeah. T I C K U. Yeah. Talk.com. All right. Peace, guys. Thanks. Drums. <laughs>